Hey everyone, today I'm going to be playing through the final 15 games in the GB Jam 2023 competition. This has been a homebrew competition where there was over 80 entries and I'm one of the judges and we managed to narrow it down to just 15. So, so here's a look at 15 of the best games in the competition. I am judging these 15 games but I won't be showing that process in this video. But I will be sharing some useful information for the developers as well as some constructive feedback too. And based on some feedback, I just want to make it clear how I'm playing these games and what I'm trying to get from this video. So I'm going to be playing the games on the Game Boy Player on the GameCube and I'm going to be using the original disc because there's been a little bit of confusion around how the games should be played. So I felt like playing on something that's designed specifically for Game Boy Color games and using the official method is probably the best way of doing that. And in terms of the judging criteria, it's actually split into six different categories. So we have gameplay, technical, originality, graphics, audio, and theme. And I'll be judging based on each of those, and although I won't be giving the scores away, I will touch upon each of those different sections as we're playing the game. And unlike the last time I did one of these, I'm not going to limit myself to any specific time frame per game. I'm going to play the games for as long as possible and come up with my own conclusions. So with that said, let's check out the first game. And in case you're wondering, this is a completely random order, and I've actually got a Google Doc right here that I'm going to be filling out after I've played each of the games to give my results. Results. So with that said, let's get started with the first game here, Nunya, which was developed by Bard. Here we go. So we can see straight away that this is a Game Boy Studio title, and the graphics were actually made in a sprite, which is something that I've actually used quite a lot for some of my game dev things in the past, so I'm very interested to see how this one goes. So let's start a new game. Now you have to click on the actual text, not on the picture above it. Here we go. This should be a good place to practice. Press A to jump. Press A to interact with NPCs and items. Okay, A for everything. Quite slippery controls. Press A twice to double jump. Quite awkward controls here. And having A to interact as well feels a little odd. I wonder if I can get back up there. Yes. Ten coins. Looks like it's my lucky day. Press down to go three platforms. Okay. Don't press down and jump at the same time. Press B to shoot. You can shoot items two times before you have to reload. Okay, how do I reload? I'm not seeing any sort of reload counter. Maybe it just takes a minute. Don't really see a bullet either, I just see like fire. Maybe it's supposed to be a shotgun. Walk by a statue to activate the checkpoint. If you die, you'll respawn at the last found statue. Press select to drink a potion and transform into a monster. You are invulnerable while in monster form. Press B to attack while in monster form. I should try destroying this using Evelyn's potion. Nice, I like that. Well, it looked like it... Something works, I guess. I feel a bit... Strand-ty. Evelyn will be happy... Oh, the potion was effective. This will help me... Something inside the dungeon. Okay, they definitely need to work on the overlapping UI there. Found three healing potions. Press up to consume a healing potion. Okay, I can't see where the healing potion is coming from. Monsters? No, just rats and bats. They should not be a problem. I can't tell when I've reloaded or not, which is a bit frustrating. And the hitbox there is quite strange. That door, I wonder if I can open it. An empty checkbox, right? Uh, text box right there. It's too dark inside of here, I can't even see the floor. Hey, we found a boss. I wonder if 
I can turn into a monster again. I'm really struggling with these controls. They're very slippery. I presume that's doing more damage. Not sure why I transformed back then. Is there a time limit on how long you can be a monster? You received a gem. You can use them to upgrade your equipment. I'll take this to the town. There are cards inside. You found two cards. You can check your card collection by pressing start. That giant rat opened a hole in the wall. I'd better check it out. Okay, let's see what the cards do. Right, press and start does nothing, so I presume that's something that hasn't been implemented yet. Okay, it's not really clear that jumping down there isn't part of the level. Oh my god, these controls are so slippery. And sometimes I'm trying to do the double jump and it's not responding. There we go, we made it. I don't really know where my health is either, I'm guessing it's the heart down there. The cave is connected to the elevator system. The map doesn't show this. Anyway, I should get out. You can open the menu by pressing start. At town, or when you're inside a safe zone. Safe zones are lit by torches. Okay, this is a safe zone. Now we can press start. Okay, we can see the cards, cool. A portrait of yourself. Have we got? You can't click on these ones. Interesting to have cards to collect throughout the game. Not really sure what purpose they have. Inventory. Okay, we have a shotgun. Um, temporarily transformed into monster. Key items, treasures. There's a map. Can I use it? No. Even though it said I could. Unless it's up here somewhere. Controls. It said I could open the map by pressing start, but it doesn't seem like that's possible yet. Guess so. No. I'm guessing that just hasn't been programmed yet. Okay, let's go up. A nice little lift segment there. Here we go. Hey, you're back from the sewers. Did the shotgun work? It's okay, at least it didn't explode on me. Uh, it could use some upgrades. Bring it to my workshop and I will see what I can do. Oh, and don't forget to bring at least one gem. I know we have friends, but the upgrade parts are expensive. See ya. Okay. I should visit the workshop first. I can go there later. Okay, where's the workshop? I should visit the workshop first. Okay, let's talk to this guy. I can't talk to that guy. Is this the workshop? Oh my, you're back. Please tell me everything. Did the potion work? Evelyn, good to see you. Yes, the monster's potion worked. Just like you said. Thank you. I knew it. My book was right. Feeling any side effects. I just feel a bit dizzy. But that's it. I'm fine. What about the effect duration? It lasted just some seconds. I was worried the effect would be permanent. I'm glad I was wrong. And just now you tell me. It's okay, I did follow all the instructions step by step. Do you think you can increase the duration? The book says it's possible. I'll gather the ingredients. Just bring me some gems. Alright, I'll see you later. Agnes must be waiting for me. See you soon. There you are, I was waiting for you. Oh, you brought a gem. Let's see what we can do. Okay. I can buy a range upgrade. Yeah. What happens if I try and buy something else? We don't have enough gems. Okay, that's a cool little upgrade system. Alright, that should do. Come back anytime. What's this? Supposed to kill him. The jumping physics definitely needs some more work. Am I supposed to shoot that box? No. Um, what 
is that? Do I need to shoot them both at once? No. Maybe... Maybe that's it in terms of the game so far. Let's see. I don't have anything left to buy anything in there. Can we go in here now? Level select, okay. Is this a new level? I think we've gone into a level, it wasn't entirely clear. Okay, you can't aim up or down or anything. I'm not sure how you're supposed to be avoiding these either, because the platform's only like two pixels wide. so scared of moving because of how slippery the controls are. I don't know how I'm supposed to avoid anything. Got like, just enough room to move a few pixels either side. Let's just escape from there. The, um, the difficult thing is that once you stop pressing that direction, you still kind of slide for a little bit. Kind of like how Mega Man 1 did that compared to the rest of the NES games. And the double jump doesn't respond half the time. Okay, we made it somewhere. Oh, hello there. I'm Enoch. You arrived just on time. I was about to return to the surface when I suddenly dropped my bag into this pit. Can you believe it? I can see the bag from here. I bet you can reach it if you get inside. See, it's not that deep. I'll give you half my loot if you can help me. I don't really know what he's on about. I'll give you half my loot if you can help me. Right now. Is it that? Save the game. Okay, it's not that. Is that it? Yes. There was no option. It just said yes. Is this like a mini game? Not really sure. They just keep respawning. Am I supposed to turn into a monster? Does that help him? I think it should be clearer if if you're actually doing damage to anything or not. It's quite vague. There's no on-screen cue to see if you're actually doing the right thing or not. Apparently it worked. Enough! Take this and get out of my rain. Did he drop something? Oh, there's a treasure chest. Again, it could be clearer if things appear on the screen. You found a card. You found 20 coins. You found a gem. You found a book. Monster level increased. A whole bunch of stuff just happened. Now what's going on? Do I not get to go and talk to that guy? I guess I can go and upgrade things again. Oh, I can buy a monster potion or a healing potion. Or I can go here and upgrade the gun again, I guess. Let's do this. Increase the reload speed. I don't know what that thing is. Is that... Am I supposed to be doing something with that? I don't know. So, do you use coins for these? You don't have enough gems. I don't know. Did I finish that level? It's kind of unclear. It looks like there's two boxes there, and one of them's got a picture of maybe a boss room. It says chests found one out of three. Chests found zero out of three. Let's try going to this second area. No, not allowed in that one. Oh, okay. You can just walk to the side. This one's like Bowser's Castle. I think that was a checkpoint. We found a TV? A book. Okay, I keep finding it. Does anything happen? 
and the switch by the looks of it as well. What are these books? They said if there's candles that's a save a safe space, but I can't press the start button in that room. It's kind of weird that you can't open the start menu from some places. Up there. Yes, there's a treasure chest. I found another book. You found a card. Is that anything? No. Okay, so I just run. I think I timed that very badly. Although it doesn't really seem like there's any consequence to getting hit. Nothing's really happened yet. In here, you found a page. You found a page. You found a page. I'm not strong enough to break it. I'll, I'll me back later. So I need to turn into a. No, even as a monster, I can't get through there. Is there another box? Okay, it's like a Mega Man thing. Okay. Oh my god, this is going to be impossible with these jumping mechanics. When it hits zero. Okay. Two, one, zero, go. Oh no! Oh my god, it looks like there's a lot of them as well. Where's item number two? One, zero, jump! Two, one, zero, jump. Oh, that wasn't fair. That just pushed me off for no reason, then. Looks like these... I don't know what happened there, either. Two, one, zero, jump. I think maybe going into the enemy is pushing me to the side. One, zero, jump. Two, oh, I can just drop that. Yay, we made it! A lot easier than Mega Man. Is that uh, just infinitely spawning? No? Don't know. Okay, we open the door. And I found another book. Oh no, that's not a book, even though it looks the same. That's a save point. Game saved. Yes. I feel like something's missing on some of these doors. It just says, yes. Okay. Am I supposed to try and attack the hand when it reaches the floor? Maybe? It just sort of disappears for a second. Not sure if I'm actually doing any damage. It disappears, so I presume I'm doing something right. No, there's some more little monsters coming out the sides. This boss hasn't got any health though, unlike the other ones. Maybe I need to turn into a monster. I don't know. Is there anything to do here? Do I need to get picked up by the hand? Okay, grab me. No. I think his eyes changed when I hit it, so maybe I'm doing something right. I can't go high enough to actually hit the box itself. Maybe this is as far as they've programmed. I don't see anything else to do. Uh, okay, he fell down. Is that good? Hey, I guess we did it. Again, it's not clear whether you're actually doing anything or not. Monster level increased. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, that's going back in, isn't it? Okay. 
maybe something changed there to show that I actually finished that level. Yeah. So now, press select to return to town. Last time, it took me straight back to town on its own, whereas this time you have to press. Um, oh, it shows up there, look, monster level 2. So we can go and get another upgrade. Let's try the range one again, although I didn't really notice it do much difference last time. Okay. We've also got 80 coins, but I don't think the coins do anything. At least I can't spend them here. At all. Alright, let's go down to level 3. Bounce on these mushrooms as well. You found a book. You found a card. I'm not sure what all the books are for. I haven't seemed to be, do be able to do anything with them. Uh, there's another chest down there. Can I go back? Card. I suppose they're just collectibles. Save the game, yes. And then this next one is just going to say yes or no. Hello, here's where I gather the potion ingredients. Now that you're here, let's try my new potion of invincibility. Like I can get a few extra shots now I've upgraded the shotgun. Again, not sure whether I'm actually causing any damage or not. as the monster. I don't know, they're just disappearing. I don't know whether that's because I hit them. Or whether they're just moving from one place to the other. It's very awkward to dodge everything with the very slippery and awkward jumping mechanics. There's definitely potential here though. I'm really, really struggling with these controls. There's no health bar either. Some of the earlier bosses had health bars. Oh, apparently that one did it. There's many strong foes ahead, but you will definitely make it to the bottom. Alright, I'm out of here. People in town need potions. I'll see you there. Okay. You found 50 coins. You found a card. You found a book. And monster level increased. Down more. Monster levels at three. Let's buy a faster. Oh, I didn't get any gems that time, just coins. I don't think the coins actually do anything. Right, it said that there were some chests that I missed in this town area, so I must be able to go left here then. You can save the game using the book statues. Press A to interact. Maybe not that one. You can save the game using book statues. Press A to interact. Maybe not that one. Okay, what's going on in here? Greetings, my name is Jean. I'm here to help Grandma with his library. Last week we lost several books. Oh, Grandpa. Grandpa blames the rats, but I doubt there are rats big enough to carry those heavy toms. Should that say tomes? I could barely lift them myself. Anyway, he is upstairs. Oh, and please come back if you find any book or page. 
Right, I have a lot of books and pages. Thanks for the help with the books. You should have this. You received a card. Okay. I don't have time to read now, maybe tomorrow. So, can I see what I've helped with? What are these empty slots? I don't have time to read, maybe tomorrow. Okay. I can read these things on the wall. Oh, I can read the ones where I've put things on. They found mazes and caves and treasure hidden everywhere. Unfortunately, that was not the only thing hidden underground. They built a town in the centre of the island when they discovered the ruins of an abandoned city. Under the ground, they did not hesitate to go in and explore. When the first explorers arrived, they found a land full of resources. Hello, are you here to help? Jean, to find the lost book? I bet the rats are the ones behind all this theft. Sometimes I can hear them lurking inside the walls. Even our display pages vanished, all of them. Have you found any books? Yes. Good job, I'll keep an eye out for those rats. Okay, that looks like everything that I can do in here. You can save... I don't know why it tells me that every time I come outside. Can we go in the inn? Hello, my name is Anne. My inn is not open yet. Come back later. You received a card. I found 12 out of 18. Yeah, I know. Oh, now it lets me save. Okay, game saved. Can I go in there? I can go in this one. So it's saying I've found 0 out of 3 chests. I can't see anywhere else to go though. Well, I can't go on the roof there either. I don't think. I can't buy anything there. Can I go in that door? Nope. Um, I, there's an extra picture that's popped up here. Maybe that means there's another boss or something. Let's try this again then, shall we? There's a door up there, but I can't jump high enough. Oh, I could jump high enough to destroy the first one. There's not really any way of getting through this without getting hurt, I don't think. Oh yeah, you can press... I forgot you could press up to heal. Right, there's definitely no chest in that section. I did rush through this bit though, so maybe there's one here somewhere. No. Oh, I can speak to this guy again now. I'll give you half my loot if you help me. It's right there. What's he saying he needs help with? Is that not a real platform? No. Do I have to go down here? Oh, okay, this is new. This is going to be very awkward. Oh, no. It starts again at the top every time. Uh, reload. I thought I bought extra reloads. Really? The arrow takes me back in one go at this point? It's never done that before. Okay, we made it, I think. This is where the extra treasure chests are. I found ten coins. And a card. And a book. You found two gems, found a card, and found a book. And that is all three treasure chests. Is that something? No. Okay, that just drops us back out here, and now that guy's disappeared. Okay, I guess we have to go and fight the boss again. Uh, why is it asking me twice? I can't get up there because it's pressing A and forcing me to save. That should definitely be moved somewhere else. I already beat this boss. Return to the entrance, yes. Okay, you don't need to do it twice. Hey, that is everything here. We've got one more chest to find in this area. 
let's go and find the last tre the last uh, treasure chest here. See, the arrows here don't reset you. So I feel like that arrow in that section should be changed to something else, just so that you know what to expect when you come across it. I think that bit's broken because that just keeps saying that over and over again. And is that supposed to be a switch? No. I'm sure it was last time, but I don't actually know if it did anything, so maybe not. Is that what causes this platform to move? But anyway, I need to keep an eye out for treasure. time? Oh yeah, I need to be... Oh! For some reason, I'm not strong enough. Very good. What about monster form? Yeah, monster form is. Here we go, we've got some more pages. And there's nothing on that last one. Okay. It was worth coming back. We got something else at least. We have to do this again. Jump. I'm... I've got the hang of it now. Two. One. Jump. Jump. First time, look at that. Skills. Okay, I didn't remember that I'd already beaten these guys. It'd be nice if there was a counter or something to show you how many you need to kill there. So. I got back to the end, but I didn't find the other treasure chest. Let's keep looking. Oh, I'm trapped on this side now. That's no good. There's no way of getting back over there. I already beat this boss. Return to the entrance. Let's try looking again. Try exploring all these pits down here. Why have I gone invisible? I don't think that's supposed to happen. Oh, there we go. I'm back. I think something's glitched. Because I'm sure that is supposed to move like you've pulled it. I don't see this other treasure chest anyway. Not sure what that is. Definitely nothing else in here. Let's try in here again. I think everything's empty in here now. In that um, like corner, no walls to break. Is there any secrets on this section? Gotta try and do it for a third time now. Ah, uh, too soon. Was close. Okay, there's definitely no treasure chest there. We we'll have to do this again. Okay, I die. Let's try monster form. Oh yeah, it can last longer now. Not forever though, like they thought. Or like she worried it might be. Okay. Before we go through, can I go through these doors here? No. Okay, I have no idea where that last treasure chest is. I'm 
I'm sure I went literally everywhere you can go right there. Return to the entrance, okay. And I have no idea how to get to any of the chests in the uh, overworld either. But these are the only other three left. Congratulations, you beat all the bosses. Thanks for playing the game. Is that it? Let's try going back. Uh, where did we put the box again? Yeah, I know I can save. Ah, stop! I feel like interact shouldn't be A. Because you're more likely to jump than shoot things. Right, I don't know what's going on in here. I did have a bunch more stuff to give her, but she doesn't seem to want anything. I can't put them on the wall here, either. Anyway. Okay, did that make anything else appear? No. What about on this stats screen? Got some extra cards. Can't click on them though. Books, 0 out of 99. There's definitely something weird going on here. Cards, 14 out of 99. And the map doesn't do anything. Maybe that's everything there is in this game. So now I'm going to do my scores. So while I'm not actually going to say, so while I'm not actually going to say what the score is in these videos, I'm going to talk through each of the different categories either, so the developers that are watching can get some ideas as to where they can improve with the game in the future. Because I really want to see all of these being turned into full games. Obviously, they are the cream of the crop, the best of the best in the competition. So I would love to see these be worked on even more. So let's start with gameplay. Um, it has an interesting premise. I like the idea of the different levels and fighting the bosses at the end and finding the treasure chests and things. There is a lot that could be improved in terms of feedback though. So for one, the controls are very slippery, so I'd like to see the physics tightened up, especially around the jumping and the double jump in particular was quite difficult to pull off. It would also be nice if there was some more animation to go along with it because like if I jump here, the sprite doesn't actually do anything, it just lifts up. So to have an actual jump in animation and maybe a second animation when you're doing a double jump would be really cool as well. And also when I'm moving to the side there, you can see it uh, takes a little bit of time to stop after, your, after you've let go. It'd be great if that was a bit more punchy, a bit more responsive. And when you're in the air as well, when you uh, let go, you sort of keep moving for a little bit as well, which means lining up some of the jumps can be slightly difficult. So that's what I'm going to say about gameplay, and I have uh, checked my box on there. So technical is, I guess, how well it runs on the system. And I can't really say there's any issues technically. I mean, the frame rate was really good. The graphics are really nice. I love this um, item management screen here. The pixel art is fantastic, so I'm quite happy with it from a technical point of view. And I like the cursor and the menu navigation and things and the way it's calculating everything. Obviously, I'm guessing some stuff isn't quite finalised yet, but the way it's adding up the treasures and the gems and the way the shop works and stuff, that's all to do with the technicalities and that all worked great, so I'm very happy with that. Originality as well, quite an original idea. I like the idea of it being a mix of a collecting game with all these cards here, as well as upgrading the weapons and also going back to the town and then venturing back out into the over into the different levels so that's really good from a uh, originality point of view as well graphics graphics are really nice like i said i love the sprite work the bosses in particular looked really nice i would say that there needs to be some more animation in the game though especially when it comes to the bosses like you can't tell whether they're actually being hurt or not so it'd be great to see some sort of animation from the boss to show that you're actually causing some damage to them and for things like shooting the gun as well it's um it doesn't really have any impact, so it'd be nice if there was some more punch to the graphics 
I, I do really like the outlines of the characters, though. That's something very nice. Um, audio? Maybe one of the weaker aspects. I mean, it's not terrible, but some of the boss fights, I remember, had quite upbeat music, and then some of them had almost, like, ambience, which was a bit strange. I'd like to hear, like, one boss theme in particular, and a separate level theme as well. And... Yeah, this town theme is, is quite nice, but it is just a very basic loop. And as for the theme, I think it fits the theme fairly well. Of course, you can actually transform into a monster, which is basically the theme of the game. And you play as a nun with a shotgun, so I guess that's kind of a monstrous thing to do as well. So high scores for the theme there. And now on to the next game, which is called Slime Trials. Alright, now we're on to game number two, which is called Slime Trials by a developer called Canite. So let's get right into it. I remember really enjoying this one when I was doing my original judging. So the interesting thing about this game is that it actually has a grapple mechanic and physics to go alongside it as well, which is very cool. I'll just turn it up a little bit because it seems like the uh, music's a little bit quiet in this one. Hopefully I've got the audio levels right. It's always a challenge trying to get the audio levels right when you're recording something but you can't actually hear what the recording sounds like anyway this game might take a little bit of uh, getting the swing of things pun intended let's see whether I can I guess do it like that that worked there we go level one complete I must say the physics feel very nice very fluid Ah. I like the fact that you can press up and down to extend or detract the uh, the length that you're actually swinging from. I presume it's supposed to be slime that's coming from you, because you play as a slime, which I guess is where the idea of uh, being the enemy in the game comes from, is you playing as a slime itself. Although you're not actually attacking anything, so I don't know how much of uh, how much you can call it playing as an enemy. Ooh, that was close. What might what have I attached onto there? I think that might be a glitch. Hey, I found a key somehow. I didn't even know I did that. Okay, I just figured out you don't actually need to press A. To jump off, you just need to release the B button. The physics are a little, a little strange, but I guess for the Game Boy, the only other game I can think of in this style is Bionic Commando, and uh, this actually doesn't feel too bad. Did I keep the key? No. Let's try going back this way then. Yeah, sometimes when you're, like, trying to swing from one side to the other on here, it is a little bit... ...awkward? Yeah, definitely a little bit awkward. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it, though. Like I said, I'm putting in a good amount of time into each of the games this time, so... ...hopefully we can take some time to uh, get used to the controls! Whoa, too high. Okay, we made it. Now we have some spikes to uh, worry about. Uh, this is only level two. This is way too difficult for the second stage. Definitely need to tweak the uh, difficulty curve a little bit. That is a problem with a lot of people who um, are quite new to game development. They'll usually make things too challenging because they're used to playing the games themselves and they haven't really had the time to either test it or they don't really have the um, background to know that you also need to reduce the con the difficulty a little bit based on what you're actually used to for people who are new to the game so bear that in mind anyone who's planning to make games in the future once you're accustomed to how the game plays try and make like at least the first few worlds a little bit easier than you think they need to be and that actually makes it a lot more 
enjoyable for people who are new to the game that don't have the same experience that you do. Because this should not be that difficult. Am I stuck? Oh no. I think I've got stuck. Damn. I really thought I was going to get past it that time. It's very awkward and there's no leeway once you swing off. It's not like you can try and swing again to grab back on. Mm. I'm determined to get past it. Well, at least get a few levels in. This is probably infuriating for the person who designed the game. Watching me play it like this. Oh, I'm stuck again. I'm not this bad at games. I managed to complete Umihara Kawase and that is an incredibly difficult grapple hook style game, so I'm just glad there's infinite lives. The lives are actually counting up. That's fun. I don't know whether it's possible, but it would be cool if you could do um, do a kind of Meat Boy style thing where it shows all of your failed attempts at the end of the level. Or at least, like, plot out all the different paths that you took to try and get to the end. That'd be fun to see. Oh my god, I really can't do this. I didn't do that. Right, let's see. If we can do it a bit closer this time. Good. Okay, we're making progress. There's the exit. It definitely needs to be a little bit more subtle because I'm just slightly tapping the right button here and he's going he's going flying. There should be a little bit of a build up. Okay. What are we supposed to do here? Latch on and then move down like that, maybe? Yeah. We're doing okay. Go up! Oh. I'm scared. No, that's not fair. See what I mean about this being too difficult, considering this is only the third level in the game. I get it, it might want to be a frustrating game, but give people a chance at least to enjoy themselves. Careful now. Oh man, I over jumped that time. These physics are quite unforgiving. It's really all or nothing. But you can't really build up any sort of momentum because it's like instantly go all the way to the left or the right or nothing at all. This is impossible. I wonder how many levels there are. I've only managed to do three. Oh my god. Right, I'm taking my jumper off. I'm getting too hot in here. Open the window. Jumper off. Gamer mode. Activate. Oh 
All right, focus, I'm leaning in. Let's do this. What's that little thing following me? Oh, an extra life. I didn't know that existed. Oh. Okay, it makes it a little bit fairer, but it doesn't really help because most of the time after you've used up your life you're just stuck somewhere. Oh, this is horrible. I thought I was going to enjoy this, but it's just way, way too challenging for its own good. I'll be curious to see what the other judges think because they must have enjoyed it in order to put it uh, in the top 15. Oh my god, okay. How are we going to get past this? <gasps> ah! Got a little bit further. We're getting a little better. Can I just jump straight over? Let's try that again. No, that is so unforgiving. There's no need for that whole area to be so precise so early on. Right, while I'm trying to do this, let's have a think about some of the categories that we're judging on. So, um, let's see what's the first thing on here. Gameplay is an interesting concept, but very flawed execution, I would say. I mean, it's responsive at least, at least compared to the last game. The jumps are more responsive. You don't slide after you've after you've moved, which is uh, always good. The grapple mechanic itself w works quite well. Oh, I got stuck then. Like in terms of latching on and the uh, smoothness of the uh, animation is quite good. The physics are not great, honestly. The hitboxes are way too big. Um, and there's not really anything else to do other than just dodge spikes. So I'm not really sure how I feel about the uh, gameplay. Oh, plus it's also way too difficult considering this is right at the start of the game. Like, if this was to become a bigger game, I would definitely recommend having at least one world that's easier to get through, just like a few spikes here and there, and make it a little bit more forgiving so people can actually enjoy themselves before throwing these sort of challenges at you. Even games like Super Meat Boy start out quite easy so you can get the hang of how the game plays first. It's like that jump there is just insanely difficult to get through. And maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I think I'm playing it how it's supposed to be played. Ah, can't do it. Okay, I'm going to pick up the little helper guy. No. See, that's the problem with the helper. Like, if there's a bit there that you just can't get out of, maybe it should just be a, a bottomless pit instead. Now, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Like that. Okay, that worked. Have we done it? I think we've made it. Yeah, we can't reach that high up. We haven't made it yet. How am I supposed to get there? Oh, swing from that, maybe? I'm scared. Oh, that was close. Yay, we did it. That's level three complete. And it only took a hundred lives. Oh my god, okay. There's a whole load of nothing here. Ow. How many lives is it going to take on this one? Another hundred? Hundred. 
this level's not so bad. Except it doesn't really seem to matter when you let go. You shoot up a lot higher than you would expect. Let's see if I can do it in one swing. Whoa! Okay. I want to do this like speedrunner style. Not fast enough that time. I wonder if the dev can just whiz through these levels without trying. That was pretty good. I'm going to try that again and then stay on that third one for a minute. Ah, not far enough. If you time it right, that's probably a better way to get across. Too high that time. <gasps> oh my god, we're doing it! You have to let go at just the right time. This almost feels like Flappy Birds in a way. The level of frustration and uh, satisfaction when you get it right. Oh my god, we've done it. No! <laughs> that was so close. Despite my complaining, I do like the concept of this game. I'm not letting go late enough on that one. That was good. Uh, I almost tried to turn around and grab the other side of it that time. Yeah, like that. Except now I'm stuck. <laughs> I managed to save myself. Ah, uh, it's too fast, the swinging is. It should um, start out a bit slower and then pick up speed. Oh, doing quite well then. I can't believe I made it all the way to the end once already. No, I wasn't far enough that time. One. If I timed it right, one, two, three. Now, how to do this without flying off too far the other way, uh, or doing that and smashing into the ceiling. I joked about it taking up another 100 lives, but it's actually close. And you don't get any uh, little monster to help you out on this one either. Not far enough that time. Shall we discuss some more of the uh, voting criteria while we're struggling to make our way through this level? So the next thing on the list is technical, and that is in terms of how how well it uses the uh, system it's made for. I will say it's pretty cool to see a game utilising physics, despite them needing a little bit of polish, shall we say. That's putting it nicely. But it's definitely cool. It's not really something that you see attempted that often on the Game Boy. And considering this is an original Game Boy game as well, and not a Game Boy Color game, like there's no slowdown or anything, so that's uh, pretty good. It'd be cool, I don't know whether this is possible, but it would be cool if those dots actually connected to you. Oh my god, am I actually going to do it? <gasps> No, I'm not fast enough. Can we get back up? Ah, so close. So, from a technical point of view, I might rate this quite highly, actually. 
the responsiveness of the, the uh, controls is nice. Despite them being very unforgiving. Um, in terms of the graphics... Oh, let's do originality next, because uh, that's the next one in the order that I'll be ranking them. It's definitely an original concept. I've not seen this style of hardcore platformer based entirely around grapple mechanics. Like, I've seen games that incorporate them in more of a puzzle setting. So I would actually rate it quite highly on originality. It'd be, it'd be nice if there was some more things to do in the level rather than just trying to avoid spikes, which is uh, all the game seems to be about. Yay, we did it! I don't know what... Oh, what happened there? I think something glitched then, because the uh, level design changed for some reason. Let's see if we can get to that. Yes. I'm getting the hang of this now. There's a key there. Now, uh, next on the list is graphics, and obviously in terms of graphics, it's not the most um, polished game out there. It's very basic. Ah! So I can't really rate it very high on graphics. There's literally no background at all. All the spikes are exactly the same. There's uh, You play as a circle with eyes. I mean... The uh, outlines around the wall are quite nice, so I wouldn't give it a 1, but, you know, it's definitely not a 4 or a 5. I'm not actually saying what exact scores I'm giving anything, but I can give little uh, bits and pieces like that away, I'm sure. So yeah, it could definitely do with a lot more polish and graphics department, and I think it could look really nice. Like, if you turn this into a proper slime that has, like, slime trails dripping down from it or something, that would be quite fun. And if you turn these into more, like, dungeons or cave aesthetic, that'd be nice. <gasps> Not quite enough to go forward there. How am I supposed to do that? It's gonna be really... quick. Okay. <sighs> that was close! Wow. Let's finish! Let me up, let me up! Yay, we did it! Congrats! 194 deaths and 19 minutes and 10 seconds. That was actually really fun. In terms of audio, there was only one song throughout the entire game and it was a little bit repetitive and the sound effect consisted nothing more than just a little bloop. And in terms of the theme, I guess you're playing as a slime, which is a monster, but it's very loose. A very loose theme, because you're basically just playing as a circle. So, there we go. That was the second game, Slime Trials. I actually really enjoyed that. And next up is a game called Hermano. Alright, this is game number three, called Hermano. Made by a developer called Pat Morita Team. So, use bombs by pressing B and up to destroy the monsters, and find a key to open the doors. Okay, sounds simple enough. Let's begin in the cemetery. Stage one. So, looks like I don't have any bombs just yet. Let's turn the music down a little bit, because I think it's a little bit too loud for the last few games. So, hopefully something around there is a bit better. Okay, let's begin. So, it looks like it's a kind of a ghosts and goblins, ghouls and ghosts style game so far. With a little bit of bonk with the whole head throwing mechanic. Um, a lot easier than either of those games so far. Right, it looks like there's a door up there where we can take a key, as it mentioned in that little title segment a bit earlier on. Used a bomb to throw at that enemy up there. So I'm presuming there's a key that we find somewhere around here that we can then take back. And we can use the bombs to blow up these little weird things. 
on the floor. Very simple game so far. Doesn't really seem like the enemies pose much of a threat at all. Even Death himself doesn't do anything. The uh, controls are fairly floaty and I got stuck. I've got stuck between them. There's, uh, seems like there's no iframes at all. So that's something to uh, for the developer to take into account if they're planning on uh, you know, polishing this game up for a full release. And there we go, get in the door. Do I need to do anything? Nope. Cool, seems like a quite nice game so far. Here we go, stage one, two. Let's see if it gets a bit more challenging. There's a hand that's trying to grab me down there. And another one. Seems like there's a bit of stuttering going on. Can I go in there? No. Again, kind of like the first game I played, there is a little bit of lag when you let go to when you actually stop moving. Which is a little bit frustrating for these kind of precise platformers, but... Maybe that was intentional to make it a little bit more difficult. We found some extra bombs up there, that's good. I think I've got a lot of bombs for the uh, amount of bomb enemies that I've found, which is zero so far. Can I aim down? No. Seems like you can aim up slightly. Or is it always just straightforward? I'm not entirely sure. We have found a dead end. I don't know if there's any benefit to killing the enemies, because they seem to respawn anyway. I guess it's just a way of getting bombs back and just clearing out the path. They don't seem to drop any other items. I was hoping they might drop some health, but it doesn't seem like it yet. Hey, yeah, it does. Excellent. Okay, there's a bunch of enemies that can be blown up here. There we go. And I've only got one bomb left. So I will save that one. Uh, do I keep going? I'm gonna do it! Whoa, okay, we've got some anti-gravity stuff going on. That was an unexpected twist. Nice, points for originality there. I'm guessing those hands hurt you if they touch you. Hopefully I will not be around. Oh, okay, I should have jumped over there. That sent me back up. That's tricky. I need health. Give me health. Where's the potion from the first game that I can just press up to use? Oh yeah, I need to go up here. Give me health. Give me health. Give me health. Why is no one dropping anything? Oh, let's hope... Oh, they have respawned. That's going to be quite annoying then, because you would have to keep killing the enemies over and over. Can I do it without touching that one? No. Ah! I almost died then. I don't know if I'm going to survive this. Well, we got a, a backup bomb. Whoa, he came back. Maybe the enemies shouldn't respawn so fast. Yay, there we go. Ah! I didn't know he was going to be there waiting for me. Looks like we've only got two lives left. dropping anything for me. That's another bomb. If we uh, play it safe, we'll be able to get through here. Oh yeah, there's some more. Nice. I forgot about them ones. I forgot how much of this level there was before you get to this bit. You have to remember that the enemies take two hits. 
Okay, maybe you're supposed to do that for the last one. Oh no, I landed on the hand. Yeah, you got some health back. Ah, not again. Oh, the enemies respawn way too fast. Basically, as soon as you leave the screen, I think. Oh no! Uh, and the jumping is a little awkward to realign yourself after. See, I'm clearing all these enemies up and they're just coming straight back again. It doesn't really make it that fun. Okay, we did it! Ready for the upside down bit? Whee! Now I need to remember to jump over the gap down here. Ready, jump! Nice. I don't trust any gaps this time. There's one. What am I supposed to do here? That's too far. Uh, oh, okay. <gasps> no! Oh, we've got to do it all again, though. There should be a checkpoint as well, I think. Once you get to that bit where the gravity flips over. I think that should be a checkpoint. Else I can see a lot of people giving up on this level just because it's so long. And unforgiving. And, you know, back in the ghosts and goblins, ghouls and ghosts days, people were happy to replay a level a hundred times, but I think these days people have a bit less um, attention span for that sort of thing, so... I'm not really sure how many people would be happy with having to replay all the stages from the beginning so soon into the game. Oh, do I go down and get that? Will it still be there? No! Okay, that's something else you need to work on. Having the items disappear as soon as they leave the screen. Even if technically they should have landed on the floor below. Oh, these respawning enemies as well. This is so annoying. I've already got enough bombs. I think if I die now as well, I'm going to be sent back to the first level again. Yeah, well, let's see what happens. Game over. I wonder how many levels are in this demo. Let's see how far we can get. Yeah, back to level one. Okay. Let's see if we can get through the first level without taking any damage. Just remember to just mash the B button whenever you uh, see death, because he takes two hits. And there's no point in killing them ones, because they just reappear anyway. And, uh, yeah, I know what to do with them now. Hmm. Looks like it does go up slightly, or it goes round in a circle. Well, I didn't manage to do it without losing any uh, health. Kind of reminds me of Dynamite Heady a little bit as well. Or, um... Yeah, you did that a lot easier that time. Maybe Kid Chameleon as well. Just a lot more basic than either of those. I like the nice big sprites though. Very nice. Alright, level one complete again. Let's move on to the second one. And while we're doing this, we can have a think about some of the uh, judging criteria, so... Gameplay is very solid. Like, the core concepts that are here are really good. And having a variety of enemies is nice too. Like, having the birds with their certain flying patterns. It'd be nice if there was other ways of attacking rather than just using the bomb or 
using your head. But I guess there's been games in the past that have done well with very simple just one or two attacks, like Bonk, like I mentioned earlier. But Dynamite Heady got around that by having lots of different upgrades for the head itself. So even though the core mechanic stays the same, there's still a lot of variety. Or even something like Pluck, like you spend the whole game just throwing your hands around, but there's like different things that you can get throughout the game that make it more interesting as you go on. Like the things that you find in the... Um, treasure boxes. So, some power-ups would definitely make it more fun. Wow, we got there in one piece. Excellent. Let's keep going. I like this upside-down, like, reversed gravity concept and having to jump over the gaps. I think that's really cool. And I guess from a difficulty point of view, it's not too bad. Like, once you memorize what you're supposed to do in the levels. It has that old school progression feel to it. So maybe I was a little bit harsh earlier on. Oh, I don't even know where the door is. But we have the key. Did I see a door? Give me health! <gasps> Where's it going? No! Oh, I got it. Nice. That works. I thought the door might be there. Have I missed the door? I might have already gone past it and just didn't notice. Is it up here? Is it down the bottom of the level? Where I came back from earlier. Oh, it'd be nice if you could turn around without moving as well. It's like, even if you very slightly tap the D-pad, you start moving in one direction or the other. You can't just turn around. Yeah, there's the door. Nice. We did it. Level 2 complete. Ghost Town. Stage 2. Oh, I guess. Level 1 Part 2 complete. Now we're in the town. Is there going to be anything different about this? Interesting background. I like the effort they put into it. Okay, that is a weird creature. Is it supposed to be a pumpkin, maybe? Shooting balls at you? Don't really know what I was looking at there. Can I go up? Oh yeah, I can. Wow, this is a big level. I didn't expect this amount of scrolling either, that's quite impressive. I'm not sure how to get up there though. I do think that the enemy spawning needs to be toned down a bit. Can I get up there? Not yet. There'll be some point where I can jump up, I'm sure. It kind of feels like Mario Land 2 with these big blocks to jump on. Although they're all just out of reach. Hey, I killed one of them weird frog things. And there is nothing over here. Okay, let's head back the other way. And these, you can't go through those doors. I just wasted the bomb trying to find out. So, there must be something I'm missing closer towards the start of the level. Maybe here? No, I'm sure I already tried there. Down there, maybe? Ooh, a new section. Okay. In the sewers. Of course, every good game has to have a sewer section. Ah! Uh, they don't seem to be dropping much. Okay, I can go down there, but let's see what's over here first. That was lucky. That was my last bomb. Hopefully they drop some more, else I'll be stuck. No, 
There's one. And one of the annoying frog slash pumpkin things. Not entirely sure what they are. I'm getting scared now. That was close. Am I going the right way? Alright, we've got a key. Excellent. Ah! No! Ah! Oh, okay, I know where to go now. Go down first. Oh, it restarted from there. Nice. I guess the key is a checkpoint. Then we've got to find out where to use the key. Hopefully it's just across here. Ah, nice. They did put another bomb there in case you can't get your way back out again. So, I guess we need to... That doesn't seem safe. Okay. Need to find some way of getting on the rooftops. Maybe, but... Let's keep uh, exploring down here a little bit first. See the way I slid then? That was like one of the side effects of having the controls so responsive that you just slightly turn and he starts walking straight away. Like, go and play Mario Land 2 and see how that control. What is that? I'm scared to touch it. Oh no, I hate that! There's no sort of long range attacks that you can use. Are we going to start from picking the key up? Good. Okay, it looks like I can't go back that way. I haven't got any bombs. I don't know what I can do to dodge him because you need to get close enough to attack. Let's try and find our way back up. I'm curious as well, once you lose all your lives, do you start from right from the beginning of the game? Or do you start from the level that you died in? I guess we'll find out in a minute. Dead end. How am I going to do that? Oh my god, the controls are too fast. Alright, we got out. No, we need to go up somehow. Up here, maybe. Can we jump on the doors? Yes. Okay, we're going up. We still need to keep going across. Is it here? Uh, no, not yet. Here? Yes! Finally! Is he gonna respawn? Oh my god. The respawns are way too tight. That's better. I still got hit. That arc should be a bit higher so that you can stand right next to them. So it's just too frustrating. Oh! Too close. I don't think there's any way. Oh, you can stand further away than I thought, I guess. I really don't like the way you keep moving when you've stopped. I mean, I'm glad that they put two platforms here instead of one. Oh, no. No way. I'm sure I was close to the end there. Game over. Right. Fingers crossed. It starts you again from that second level, second stage, not right from the first one. Come on. Ah, oh, stage one, really? Okay. Let's do it all again. And while we're doing that, we can talk about some of the other ones. So, gameplay I've kind of covered. The mix between good and a little too frustrating for my liking. But obviously, these are only my opinions. It definitely feels better than the other games that we've played so far. So I'll definitely get a high ranking in the gameplay category. But I do think it could do with a bit more variety, especially in terms of the attacks. 
and the movement definitely needs cleaning up a little bit. If you want it to feel like a modern game, anyway. But yeah, this wouldn't be out of place in the original Game Boy's library if it was released when it came out. It just needs a little bit of cleaning up, and yeah, there's a really good game here. But I do see it getting very repetitive, and maybe a little bit too challenging for, challenging for people to persevere with it after like the second stage. Like, if I was just playing this casually, I don't know whether I would have bothered restarting now to try and get past the second level. But, like I said, the more you play it, the better that you get at the game. The more likely you are to get further in it next time. So it's not so bad, really. Oh my god, there's a lot of things going on here. Do the third one from standing on there. See what I mean about um, understanding what you need to do in the stage from replaying it. Yay! Didn't have too much trouble getting back to this section. I almost overstepped there. the bats being annoying in this section. Oh, I didn't mean to throw a bomb. No one's dropping any health. There definitely needs to be more health drops than I'm actually getting, because it is quite bad. Compared to the amount of bombs that you pick up, there should definitely be more hearts. To go along with them. I was so close to getting the key then as well, that's frustrating. Shall we go up here and get some more bombs again? scared about where I'm going to land after that jump. I'm impressed with how big the levels are, without any loading between them. The scrolling's really impressive. Whoops. I'll do the third one from on there. There we go. Uh, watch out for this guy. Hopefully I can hit him from here. Yes. Okay, we did it. And we've got full health. To see how long I can hold on to that. And hopefully everyone's enjoying watching. I know this is going to be a very long video, but hopefully it goes to show the amount of effort that I've put into judging these, and hopefully any developers watching have got some good notes to uh, take away from this as well. Because I know it's kind of difficult to get people to give this much honest feedback as well, so Hopefully it's useful. I would definitely like to have seen something like this myself if I'd have made a game. So I'm kind of making this for the developers more than anything, so I hope you appreciate this. I hope it's useful. And I hope, off the back of it, the games get better as well. That's my ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to have good developers and good games to play on these systems, so anything I can do to help that cause is definitely something that I'm uh, very happy to try and do for people. And know that any criticism that I'm making, I'm making it because I want the games to be better. Not because I think you're bad developers, because obviously all of you, all of these games that we're playing are good. 
else they wouldn't have made the, uh, the shortlist in the first place. So I definitely commend everyone that's made these games. And I want you to all become better developers as well, and part of the process of becoming a better developer is, you know, listening to feedback, taking it on board, not taking everything so personally and not taking things to heart as much. It's, uh, it's something you learn over time, so hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a good place with this, and I hope you can understand that. Because I want to see this community succeed and, and thrive, and we can have more interesting games to play. And the games that I've played so far, they've all been really good. I'm very impressed. Overall. And I think I know what I need to do this time, too. Oh no! That was close. Nearly lost my only bomb then. And we would have been trapped down here. Uh, where is the key? It's a long way away. Oh! I got some health, I think. Oh no. Uh, I got health and I lost it straight away. Well, anyway, there's the key! Now we're gonna find our way back over. Oh, I forgot the enemies respawn so fast. That is definitely my biggest complaint. Like, it should be safe for you to venture back where you just came from. Uh, should I go and get the other one? I don't know whether they respawn as well. No, they don't. But at least that stays. Stays gone. Now I just need to find my way back up. There should be a bit somewhere with three of them in a row. There it is. I'm so scared doing that jump, but I think it's always fine. I love the jump animation too, and the way he uh, closes his eyes like that when he jumps. It's really cute. The frame rate drops quite a bit in this section though. I don't know whether you can really tell on the stream, but it's quite choppy. Not deal breaking or anything, but just thought I would point it out that it seems to be struggling a little bit. Maybe because of how big the sprites are. Okay, I gotta time this right. Right now. Oh no, now he's respawned. He, it, I don't know what it is. Can I hit it from there? Let's try when it comes back over. Am I safe? Oh cool, I'll do that instead then. Ready? That worked. I've only got two hearts though, so I've gotta be careful. One now. Hey, there's one. Back up to two. I'll take it. Ah, <laughs> back down again. I hate that enemy so much. I'm scared. There's going to be another one, isn't there? Is this where I died last time? Is it down there? Ooh, did I not get this far before? <laughs> That'll do. I'll just kill it with a bomb instead. I got another bomb! Oh my god, that was close. I've got one more. I'm genuinely getting scared now. I don't want to undo all this because I would have to go all the way back round again. Yes, we made it! That's the end of stage two. Stage 2 part 1, should I say. Another new enemy. <clears throat> okay, I guess we're going to the desert. I haven't got any bombs. Oh, I do! Can I touch it? That was close. Guess I can just jump over these ones. Is there anything to do in this level? It just seems very straightforward. Oh. Oh no. Can I get over there? Am I supposed to do that and bounce off it? I guess that's interesting. Uh. Now what?
Oh, okay. I didn't realise it was that kind of. Oh no, that kind of level. Somehow I made it. Oh my god, first try. I don't know whether I was supposed to jump over that one. I didn't realise that it was one of those gravity bits. All right, level three. Mayan ruins. Oh, we got a scrolling stage. I did not know they pooed on you. Give me that. Wow. Oh no, I forgot how twitchy the controls are. We've only got one life left. Ah, oh, these controls. They really don't work well with single platforms like that. Game over. I don't think I'm going to go through that again. That was like half an hour of, of gameplay right there. But, you know, if there was like a save system in place and it didn't start you right from the beginning every time, I could see myself continuing to play this. But I think it is a little bit too unfair to make people replay all the way up to the stage that they died every time. So, anyway really cool game hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at that one um gameplay was for the most part great the controls could definitely do with a little bit of tweaking uh technical very impressive especially with the really big sprites and all of the different backgrounds and things originality um maybe the weakest aspect i mean it is just a slightly easier to control version of ghouls and ghosts with more backtracking i guess and finding keys to open doors isn't particularly original. Graphics are amazing from what I saw so far. Really nice big sprites, really nice backgrounds, different level themes and stuff. Audio's good, definitely fits the theme of the game very well. And the theme, You Are the Monster, I'm not too sure. Because you're just killing monsters like normal, you're just a skeleton. So I don't really know whether where the theme fits in this one, is it... If you were killing people instead of other monsters, it might make more sense. I guess you're playing as a monster that someone might fight in a different kind of game, so... Not too sure about the theme, but other than that, really high scores all around for this one. So, that was it for Hermano. And next up is a game called The Host. Okay, this is game number four. This one is called The Host. By All Alone Games, with a Z. Music by Sloopy Goop. I've heard of them before. And I guess this is pretending to be an old game, because it said 1998 there. And uh, let's begin by watching the intro. Why not? That's pretty cool. Rumours are flooding the web after a leak from the Pentagon. Do I need to press A? Okay. A pyramid was discovered by the US government in the depths of the Antarctic. The strong US Army's presence in this area only confirms this rumour. Satellite images reveal the presence of military infrastructures on the site. You can play any of the three zones from the start. By playing in order, you can follow the story. Okay, let's follow the story. When playing on easy mode, press select to skip a level. Let's do normal mode for now. Maybe we can use easy mode later if we need to. A few hours after the humans broke into the pyramid. There's a little alien in a Metroid style tube. Is it going to break out? I love this so far. The graphics are really nice. And it's nice to have options like being able to skip the levels if you want to. Definitely appreciate that after the last game we just played. Uh, welcome back to Earth, Prince of Darkness. The humans broke the seal again. Now you're free. One of your disciples is going to help you out. Right now, you're too weak to jump. How did I get here? What's going on? Okay, I guess he's fine to go over spikes. Because he's a monster. Uh, you can possess humans just by touching them, do you remember? Utilise their power to jump. Cool. That's a nice mechanic. Cool music too. Hopefully you can hear that okay on the video. When the human you possess... 
uh, dies, you are ejected from him. Press start to restart. Okay, I don't see the point of using the human there, but I guess it's just to show you what's going on. Okay, you get, like, propelled forwards. And you can actually use his dead body as a platform, too. That's interesting. I love this already. This is a really cool puzzle platformer. So... What's the point here? Do I... Do I have to save both of them? I didn't really get what was going on then. Oh, okay. So you don't want him to land on the spikes, because that will stop you from going down there. Interesting. Nice ideas. And this is what I was saying about that uh, grapple hook game. Start by making it easier than it actually needs to be to ease people into uh, how to play the game. That's cool as well, using the human as a platform. Nice concept there. I think I'm stuck. Do I just have to go that way around? Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot you can jump us in, obviously. I need to go a bit higher than that though. That works. Just shoot me up into the air. There's two here. Where are the two? Okay, because that doesn't go far enough. Hmm. How am I supposed to utilize them both? Like doing that, but firing me out the other direction? No, that didn't work. Yeah, like that, I guess. That worked! I don't know what the point of that top platform is. Is that just to trick you? Hmm, okay. Maybe you have to avoid using the human for this one. Uh, go! Yes! That worked. I wasn't sure whether that would work or not. There's two here. Why are there two? Use the one on the left first. I like this. It's it's simple, but not too simple. It's like just the right amount of challenge. Oh, do I have to go faster there? Before that Metroid thing disappears. There we go. Now I was I was about to say it'd be nice if they introduced some new mechanics soon. Oh. Oh, nice. I didn't think that would have done it in time. Hmm. Maybe I need to do it like... No, that didn't work. How am I supposed to do that? I'm trapped down there. Maybe using this guy first. I'm not jumping high enough there. This is the first one that I've been slightly confused about. Well, I can do that to get over there, but... Still not enough to get the key. Uh, maybe that's what you need to do. Mm, maybe like that, but a little bit higher up. So I can go across there. Like, like that. Okay. Just a little bit further over. Yes! Uh, or not. Hmm. This is the first one I've got stuck on. Okay, I think I did it. 
I don't know whether that's the right thing to do, because that guy's just stood down there for no reason. What's going on here? Okay. Here we find out... Uh, the Metroid things... Oh, okay, I get it. I just have to let it out when he's over there so I can get past. The Metroid things can kill the humans. do a jump that tight. Oh yeah. Hmm, although you can't get back over there then. Maybe the idea is to just walk into it. Like that. Still stuck on the other side though. This one's tricky. Hmm, doing okay so far. Is it a dead end? Maybe there's just more keys than you actually need. Is that one a trick again? Seems like there's a lot of tricks there. What's going on there? There's more keys than actually the amount of areas to unlock. How am I supposed to do this one? There's only one key in this one. Okay. That guy must be standing there for a reason. Oh, I think I get it. Like that? I still don't see how that's going to help, actually. Hmm. What do I need to do on this one? It went from being easy to be an impossible challenge. Do I take him down? And use him as a platform. Maybe a little bit higher up. Like that. Oh, I didn't mean to kill him. Okay, I think I've got it. Oh. Not sure what to do now. Because I still need a human alive. in order to... I can't push him either. I still need a human alive up there in order to get to the gap. What about... If I jump at the right angle here to hit the... Uh, Can we go under there? No. I'm really stumped on this one. That must be right, but I don't know what to do with this guy. I just need him out of the way. That's the only other place you can put anyone. You can't go through there. Oh, do you even need to? You don't even need to. I don't get why all these keys are here if you don't need to use them. Oh. Do I have to just do that really fast? And try and jump that way. Okay, that was a weirdly easy level. I don't understand why there's so many keys hidden around if you don't need to use them. That's a bit of a weird design choice. Uh, 
Uh, what am I doing now? Once I pick that key up, all this is going to disappear. Maybe like this? Still don't understand how I'm going to get up there. I need to kill him here or something so I can jump up. Oh, do you think I'm supposed to be able to die like there and then jump over to it? Somehow die there but throw myself out that way. Uh, almost. Maybe I was on the right track there. Can we go down? No. Oh, that nearly worked, but I glitched out a bit. Go that way! No! I think I've gone too far. Hmm. Weird level design again. Go, go, up. Ah, oh, glitched again. Push to that side. Not really sure what to do here either. It seems like there's a very strange mix of very easy levels followed by extremely difficult levels. It'd be good if I could just kill him there. I have no choice but to go that way, I guess. Oh, I'm stumped. Uh, uh. That did something, but I don't think there's any way to get back over. Unless I can glitch through where the key's needed, somehow. Understand this one. That's pretty close. Maybe that's good. Uh, hey, that worked. I don't know how I did that any different to any of the other times. What? That, that caused it to. Sure, how you escape from that? What? There's nowhere I can go. Literally nowhere. I really don't understand this one. I'll probably figure it out in a minute. I think the le the um, puzzles definitely need a rethink. Like some of them have way too many things in for what you actually need, and then some of them just don't have any kind of hint as to what you're actually supposed to be doing. Like this one. Like once I'm here, there's just I've got nothing to work on at all. Don't understand. Like, the only thing I can do is go up and get that key, because there's no nowhere for me to go on this side. That's locked. I can't get to the other guy first, so I have to do that. And then the only thing you can do here is just go into those spikes. There really isn't anything else you can do. I'm so confused. There's nothing... There's nothing at all. You can't get back down 
from here. The only way is up there, but you can't go far enough to get up there. I can't go past that one to uh, get the other guy to use him as a platform up there either. I can't jump up to get the key. I can't get back down as soon as I pick it up, that pops up, so... The only thing I can do is put a block on there. Am I being dumb? There must be an obvious solution to this. I'm not going to give up. I want to be able to bring that other guy up here with me. What about... I think I had an idea. If I try and hold down when I'm going up there and see if I can glitch back through the floor. You shouldn't have to try and glitch your way to solving a puzzle. That can't be the right solution. Okay, let's think about it. What options do I actually have? I don't think there's enough space to get back down there. Literally, the only thing I can do is jump on these spikes here. I can't jump far enough to get over to that one. Once I've done that, I can't jump anywhere. Uh, there's not enough of a gap to get back through there. Um, there's nothing over this side. If I take him over here first... I'm just trapped. Can't do anything here. really have no idea. I might have to give up on this one. I'm going to look on YouTube and see whether the, anyone else has uh, played the game this far. Uh, what is this one called again? The Host. Doesn't look like anyone's played the game, unfortunately, so we are out here on our own. Yeah, I really don't know. Whoops. Oh, what am I doing? There's no way to reset, is there? I can do that. Okay. I'm going to try playing it on easy mode and just skip past that one. Because I don't know whether that's just not finished being developed, but I could not find a way through that. Um, by... Do I get to choose to play it on easy? Okay, hopefully there's nothing different between that and easy mode, but we'll see. I want to see what the rest of the game has to offer. Skip! Let me skip! Oh, you don't have to teach me all this. Skip level. I know what to do. There should be a way to skip the tutorial, too. Skip level. Oh, maybe it's faster to just actually play through these ones. Aha, uh -huh, I messed that one up. Skip. Skip. Enjoy the music while I'm doing this. That was a weird level. That one was weird too. Why are there so many other keys? Okay. I'm going to think about it one more time because I really feel bad for skipping the stage. But I really can't see any way through this one. I really can't. Let me know down in the comments if you managed to figure this one out. But Ugh, I can't go any further than that. I'm going to skip it. Sorry.
Oh, okay. Don't jump that high up. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong button, though. Okay, interesting idea. And then just wait for the Metroid to go past. Oh, he came back up. That was a bit dangerous. Oh, and then what? Am I supposed to use the Metroid as the platform instead? Hmm. Okay, that's not as simple as I thought. I think I've done it too high up. Yeah. I'm stuck. Actually, I'm not sure how to do this. Maybe some of these levels are a bit too cryptic for their own good. No. no, too soon again. If it went over more, then that would make more sense. Maybe that'll work. Ugh. I don't know how to make it go any further over than that. I can do it a little bit further over. Okay. Maybe that's okay. Not quite, I don't think. Oh, he's gone back this way again. Uh, not quite. I really don't know how you can go that close. No. no. I don't feel that's high enough. No. If the enemy came over there, that would make sense, and then you can use it to boost yourself up. Oh, I glitched through it then. I don't understand how to do this one either then. I feel bad for playing on easy and skipping some levels, but I might have to start doing that. Oi, we did it! That is how you're supposed to do it. That's too tight. Alright, what's going on on this one? Why did the floor disappear? It didn't do anything. Oh, okay. It stops you from being able to go back over there. Right. I suppose there's nothing you can do to stop that from happening. Oh. Damn, I really thought I was being clever then. I wonder if I can... I think that was the right idea. Ah! I need to jump back over to the left, I keep forgetting that. So I need to make just enough of a platform for him to be able to get the key. Or am I supposed to try and jump over it like that, maybe? This is so difficult. Again, I think this is 
a case of a developer being too good at their own game and making puzzles based on their skill level rather than the skill level of the players themselves who haven't experienced the game to such an intricate detail as them as I can see people giving up at this point some of these puzzles are way too pixel perfect but I did it but even so my point still stands it's a little bit too precise for the kind of game that it is I don't know whether I'm enjoying this anymore. Again, I don't know how to get back up from here. Let's try it this way around. Don't know what difference that would make. Some of these designs just don't make any sense when you look at them. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one. I wonder how many there are. Oh, that was the last one anyway. Okay, there's a new controversy about the Ice Pyramid. The White House made public the death of 68 soldiers. The deaths are all accidental. Low temperatures have frozen the air recycling system. And investig an investigation is taking place to determine who is accountable for this negligence. Some contend that the state is concealing the actual cause of death. Of the death. Alright, level two. The lab. When playing on easy mode, press select. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to play it on easy mode. Some of these are just too challenging for me. Oh. Humans can be used to regain other powers. You can teleport between humans. Simply throw parasites at them. Okay, what's going on now? What? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. That's cool. That'll set up some interesting challenges. I love that. That's really cool that they've actually introduced new mechanics. And that can go across the entire screen as well. Nice. I love this. Originality gets bonus points for this game. This is crazy. Ah, that's so clever. Although I'm trapped now. Aha! That's what you got to do to get out of the way of it. Really nice. And new music as well. Sounds really nice too. That is genius. Depending on when you throw the... Uh, when you're in the air, then you'll turn into a platform. Oh, I could have used that one. Maybe I can use it anyway. I can use it anyway. Genius. And then I just know that a bit later on I'm going to get frustrated at the uh, difficulty of some of the later puzzles. But these early ones are really nice. Hmm. How is this going to work? Is it like... Oh, okay. I get it. Right, ready? And then you can use him as a platform to get over. Ah! If I didn't bang my head on the non-existent ceiling. Maybe I just have to do it like that. Maybe? A little bit higher up? Or a little bit further over. Uh, not quite. I've also got to jump a little bit too. I don't think I've done it. I'm a bit closer though. I need to jump a bit sooner. Alright, let's try again. 
that should have done it. Yes! Brilliant. I love these puzzles. These are really, really clever. Okay, there are three this time. Um, I'm not quite tall enough to do those jumps in one go, so... Oh no, I wasn't fast enough. I get the idea though. And then... Run! That's so clever. This is probably my favourite out of the games that we've uh, shown on the stream so far. Did that work? It did! I didn't think that would have worked. Brilliant. It'd be nice if it told you how many levels there were so you knew how close to the uh, goal you are. Right, I suppose I'm supposed to make some stairs for this one. Oh my god, okay, I was miles off. That might work. Yes, it worked. I didn't quite need to make the actual stairs. Okay, we got another a new thing, a button. Okay. Interesting. So, like that? Nice. This one seems a lot easier than the first world for some reason. These puzzles are making a lot more sense. There. Oh, okay. Blocks the uh... right. I'm supposed to send it and then press it again. Genius! I'm loving this level. All this world. This is so clever. Ah, uh, right. You really have to do that fast. Got it. Oh, there's another guy stuck at the top. Okay. I don't know how to get up there. Use him first, maybe. Hmm. I need to jump a bit higher, I think. I get the idea, though. If I stand like that, I wonder whether I can... Let's just try that. It's a little bit higher. Yes! I didn't think that would work. Right, what do we have to worry about now? There's uh, a green and a... Ah! Stop! Okay, interesting. So I have to hit that and then hit this one, and then go over here and fire, and touch him at the right time to get up the top, yes! Brilliant. Mm, what am I looking at here? I just need to stand close enough. So that he falls down there, I guess. That's an easy one. It's a weirdly easy level. Okay, I wonder how many more there are. And there's still another world to go after this. This is insane for a game jam. Uh, 
<laughs> did I manage to make a good enough platform? Yes, I did. It's quite lenient, I guess. I love the fact that these are all single screen as well. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Will that even reach? No. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, this one's just about timing then. Uh, no. Okay. Hmm. But I need to... I'm confused now. I have no choice but to use this one to start with. How am I going to keep that end one alive in order to get through the door? Do I come over here and get the key myself? No. Okay, I'm confused about this one. There's no way of changing the direction of that. Either. There's nothing, nothing I can do about this one. Let's think about it for a minute. So if he drops down first and gets the key, there's no way of triggering the one at the top to move. The one in the middle, you have to touch because that's the only option. And then as soon as the one on the right triggers the one on the left, the one on the right freezes, which means that you can't move him towards the door. But the one on the left can only get the key if he drops down there and that he's too far down to jump through that gap. Hmm. And there's nothing to kill the humans in order to turn back into the mutant thing either. I'm very stuck. At least I don't think there's anything that can kill the humans. I might end up having to skip this one, because this one doesn't make any sense. Let's try it this way around. I really don't think there's anything I can do. And I definitely can't go through these walls. No. I can jump, but I can't do anything for that. Okay, I'm going to skip this one. I don't understand what I'm doing on that one. Again, that was the last one. Okay. The laboratory uh, located near the ice pyramid creates tensions. Several nations have accused the US of attempting to create a biological weapon. At the same time, the families of missing soldiers are demonstrating. They demand an end to the situation that has become uncontrollable. Okay. So we go to a tunnel. Your body recovers quickly. By pressing up, parasites can be thrown upwards. Okay, nice. Could have done with that in the last one. I love that each area is introducing new mechanics though, that's cool. I can see this getting a bit complicated though. Ah, nice. Oh, we didn't turn into a, uh, a platform that time. Do they not turn into platforms when they die in this one? Oh. Okay, they turn into platforms when they uh, become frozen. Does that switch to anything? I just have to be really fast. I don't know how I'm going to make enough room there. I don't think there's any way of running any faster, is there? How am I supposed to do this? Go right on the last pixel? What? Go! 
Oh, I didn't even press it. Go, 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 go. Slightly. This is a case of it being too precise again, I think. I don't know how to go any faster than that. Is there anywhere else to go? I love the new music again. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Well, that's literally as far as I can possibly go. Like there. Go! Three, two, one, go! That was literally on the last pixel. Oh, you still can't get through. I wonder if that alarm there's got anything to do with it. Go! No, I'm not going to make it. Okay, I really don't know what to do. There's literally nothing else I can do. I might end up having to skip this one. Good job I didn't force myself to play through on them. I'm not doing that. That's impossible. Oh, okay. I get it. I think. Do that, but... Better! Yes. Okay, that was an easy one. I I must have missed something on that last stage, because it can't be that difficult. Yeah, I did that wrong. Can I go down first? I get what to do here. Try and use them as a platform in the middle. Not like that. Like that, but lower down. Oh, uh, maybe that could have worked, actually. Just do it and then go straight to the floor. Ah! Yeah, that works. Do that in any other order? I don't understand this one. There's nothing... There's nothing I can do. The only option I've got is to trigger this guy. come out of there. Oh! I didn't realise I would fall down there. Okay. Maybe this level's just not finished properly, because I guess I can just do that and go back again. Don't even need the key. That doesn't seem right. Right, okay, what have we got this time? We've got... Okay, interesting. So I have to do that and that and then get ready to jump on that. Oh my god. That was good coordination. Okay. Do that a little bit further over. That? Is it that simple? Weird, that was an easy one. This one seems a lot easier than the last set of levels. That guy walking around makes me think that I should leave him there for some reason. What? 
Well, I don't get what the point of that was. Why would I have been that far over? Oh, if I chose the other guy, maybe. It would stop me from getting him. Hmm. Okay, this is another one where you just have to turn him into a platform at the right time, I guess. And do the same with this guy. Another weirdly easy level. Unless I'm just getting better at the game. Oh, okay, I just have to do this one fast enough to not anger the Metroid. Okay. Go, go, go! Did I make it? Yep. Just in time. Uh... Oh, I can't get up there, though. Whoa, that was too high. Maybe I can just do it like that. to do on this one. Obviously I need to make a platform there. I also need to... I need to make two platforms in there. But I can't trigger that guy on the end. Oh no, that works. Just with one. Okay. And use him as a platform to get out. Yes, we did it. That was a clever level too. I like that one. Oh, he died. We did it! Didn't even need the key. Is I going to remove both of the platforms? Ah, how did that take them both out? Oh, okay, the timing on this is going to be weird. Not sure how it's hitting both of them. Is that just because I'm too close? That was good. That was bad. But maybe. No, we still need the other one. At least I know what to do. No! Ooh, have we done it? That works. We didn't even need the other platform. Okay. Don't hit the red key. Got it. Don't know how I'm going to get over there without touching the red key. Oh. Don't touch the yellow key? No. Don't touch either of the keys. Can we get through without touching either of them? Okay. Just ignore the keys. Got it. Right, I think I know what to do. Fairly simple level. Is there more? I really wish it told you how many levels there are. Um. Oh, 
I guess, go over here. Whoa, too high. I suppose I'm supposed to put him where the other one is. Okay, let's try that again. I'll try it that way around. That's a lot easier. Oh, need to be a little bit further over. Okay. Right there. Yay, easy. These spikes seem to be different. Okay. Ow! How dare the spikes hurt me? That's not allowed. I guess they're okay for humans? No. Nope. Not okay for anyone. Hmm, okay, I thought you might have to... ...try and time it. Do we have to do it? Oh, okay, okay. Do we have to do it like this? I'm not sure what to do actually. Hmm. Something like that. And then try and make a platform down there for him to jump on. Oh, that should have counted. I've nearly played this one for an hour now. The timing. I'm probably doing this wrong, aren't I? Might end up skipping this one unless I find a, a better way to solve it. I'm going to skip this one. I'm not going to get through all the games if they all take an hour each. That's ridiculous. Okay, let's see what we can do. I definitely love the concept of this thing. I think I did that too high. I definitely appreciate the fact that they let you... Uh, skip some levels if you wanted to. Oh, no. well, how did that happen? Too far now. No, I didn't do it far enough. God damn it. Well, I'm going to skip it. I get the point of that level anyway. There's a mouse over there. Oh, we got a cutscene. Okay. Do I inhabit the mouse? Oh, okay. Interesting. This is new. Okay. Slowly crawl towards the door. Why is there a tank waiting for me on the other side? What's going on? Stay focused. It's our last chance to stop the thing. Shoot any human or monster that exits that door. If we let this thing escape, humanity will be doomed. Something is coming. Uh, okay, they weren't doing their job very well. It's just a rat, that's all. The monster can't escape with all that firepower. <gasps> it's escaped. The end. There we go. That was awesome. What a very well made game and demo. If they could improve on some of the uh, readability of the puzzles, I guess. And give you a counter to see how many levels you've got through. 
that's really cool, especially if there's some extra um, level on gimmicks and things a bit later on. Gameplay was fantastic. Technical as well, excellent. Originality, yeah, very original. Great graphics, great audio, and yeah, perfect for the theme as well. I think that one's going to do really well. Just my personal opinion, obviously. Don't take anything as fact, but really, really enjoyed that one. And next up is a game called Imperium Strike Force. Alright, this is game number five called Imperium Strike Force. Apparently this one is a kind of fan remake of a Game Boy game called Mercenary Force. So let's see how this one plays. Uh, Inquisitorial Order Incoming. Our spies suspect... Our spies suspect Genus Dealer cult activity nearby the mining settlement on Rictus 5. Purge the taint of corruption, civilian casualties, acceptable. Okay, I guess that's where the You Are the Monster comes in? Because it doesn't matter about civilian casualties? Interesting. Very blippy bloppy music. Um, oh yeah, just like Mercenary Force, you can actually change the formation of the troops, which is cool. Um, have I run out of ammo? Maybe. Or maybe I was in the wrong formation to be able to shoot at things. I'm not sure what I took damage from then. Is the floor deadly? The scrolling is very choppy. And it looks like you just get left behind if you stay back. I'm pretty sure in the original game you carry on moving forward. Okay, have to adjust the direction there. I'm doing really badly. It's a nice concept for a game. But this is definitely not as smooth or enjoyable as the real game. I wonder if there's anything like the shop from the original. Oh, I missed a bit there. Proceed to the interior. Okay. Mission success. Your passion for elimination is highly commendable. Okay. Oh, that's all for the demo. Thanks for playing. I hope you have I hope to have more content uh, soon. In the meantime, please enjoy this comical robot shopkeeper. Peace and love. A customer. Praise the Emperor. Okay. I guess I can't really buy anything. Is that it? Is it just going to reset? Okay. We'll try playing it again once more, but wow, that was a little fast. Considering the last few games have taken about an hour each to play through. It's quite surprised that uh, this is all they managed to make in three months. Well, I'll play it again, see whether I can get the end, get to the end without losing any troops. There's definitely potential here. They could make some interesting side-scrolling levels. And maybe even some that move vertically. But uh, definitely more of a proof of concept rather than an actual game at this point. Oh, I was a bit soon to go in that formation. Looks like collecting anything doesn't do anything yet either. I wonder if pressing select does anything. Oh, okay, that's new. Can I just run into things like that? Nice. Oh no, I lost someone. We've lost two people. Never mind. We've got to find out a new formation anyway. That's the Dreadnought, I think they called it. It's a bit weird that you can go off the side of the screen as well. Oh no. I just killed someone else too. I'm not sure what that floating eyeball is, it doesn't really do anything. Right, I wonder what happens here if I refuse to go through the door. Will it keep scrolling? No, it just ends. Get out of the way! I don't want to die from that eyeball. Okay, there we go. Mission success. Thanks for playing. Okay, really don't know what to say about that one. That was a lot faster than I thought. Um, gameplay, I guess, is good. Originality is obviously... 
terrible because it's not original in the slightest. It's actually just a, a port of an existing game. Technical, it's okay. I mean, there was a lot of bullets on the screen, but the scrolling wasn't very good. Graphics were nice-ish. I mean, you could definitely tell where the different... Um, You could definitely tell why the different tiles intersected um, and the enemies weren't really that expressive. Audio was just bleeps and bloops and the theme, I'm not really too sure how that fits the theme. I feel like the developer just wanted to try and make an existing game more than anything and just shoehorned in the fact that civilian casualties are okay. So yeah, not too sure what to think about that one, but not terrible. And anyway, on to the next game, which is called Ghost of the Arcade, and I remember that one being a good one. Alright, hello, this next game is called Ghost of the Arcade by the developer Play Instinct. So let's get straight into the story mode. New game. And it suddenly got really loud. That in-game music is way louder. All right, let's go. Looks like we're playing as this little devil here. From what I remember about this game, you're actually inside an arcade and you play a bunch of different mini games. And there's like an overarching story of you and your friends that have been trapped in there, I think anyway. But uh, we will see again in a minute. So first of all, for this mini game, the controls seem nice and responsive. There we go. Oh, have I escaped? Hey, monster kid, come here. <clears throat> Over here, come to us. And apologies if I sound a little bit different today. I'm suffering with a bit of a cold at the minute, so hopefully it won't affect my gameplay too much, and you can still enjoy the feedback that I'll be giving as I play through these games today. So, hey, monster boy, does your mother also have horns? Yes, she does. Why are you asking? And instantly we see the theme for the game jam. In full effect, right here, you are the monster. Um, then I bet she is always horny. Ha ha. Ha ha. What does horny mean? Uh, it means someone's so tired they need to take a quarter hour nap. At least that's what brother always does when he says that he's horny. Uh, <laughs> okay, well my mum isn't, isn't tired all the time, just tired of you. You guys are mean. You dare to call me mean nasty monster? I, the brave hero, shall slay the ferocious monster that dared to insult me. Show the monster who is boss, Jerry. Oh no, don't start a fight with me. What did I do? Ouch. Oh yeah, I remember. I won't ruin it for anyone. Hey, stand up, loser. He does not move. Is he dead? Uh-oh, this is going to get us into trouble. Yeah, his friends just killed him. Stop killing my customers. We ain't done nothing, he just tripped. Yeah, sure, and I'm the princess of the fungus kingdom. You are? Of course not, don't try to fool me. I saw everything on my surveillance camera. Look, it's not our fault that kid's, that monster kid is such a pushover. Pushover or not, you shouldn't just push other people around. Your name is Jerry, right? You'll have to face a punishment for your actions. I hereby banish you from this arcade for a whole week. Ah, that's not fair. Yes, it is. You could have caused him to bleed on the carpet. I had it renewed just a week ago. Consider yourselves lucky that you only broke his neck. Now get out of my shop. Stupid monster kid. What happened? Why do I feel so light? Is that my body on the floor? Am I dead? Oh no. I am dead. Hey mister, please help me. I think I'm dead. I better clean up quickly. Dead kids are bad for business. Hey mister, I'm talking to you. I think I'm going to put his body in the freezer until his parents come to pick it up. I can't have it decompose and attract bugs. Hey, I'm here behind you. It's no use. He does not notice me. Am I invisible to him? Does that mean that my family can't see me either? I want to go home. This is my body. It doesn't move or breathe. It doesn't seem like I can get back in. Oh dear. Poor Jerry can't come to the arcade for a whole week. He killed me. It's only fair. And you've also been very rude to me. Well, on the bright side, he doesn't always occupy the monster truck tour machine and I get to play too. Hey, I'm talking to you. He doesn't notice me, I'm going to go home. 
What was that strange noise? Whatever, I can't have it distract me. I finally beat the high score. Why does this game have to be so difficult? A vending machine for drinks. Nice, it's got eight directions of movement. That's still kind of uncommon for these uh, RPG games. This area is roped off. Okay, what am I supposed to do now? Do I need to try and play one of the games? I remember playing games when I did my initial demo. I can't remember. What am I supposed to do? Seems like no one can see or hear me. I just want to go home. This feels like some force is pulling me back inside. What should I do? That was the voice of the arcade owner. <coughs> oh, my voice is going. I'm sorry. I better go over to him. There's a box. Is that my body? He's going to take me to the freezer. There you are, kiddo. You can see me? Yeah, thanks to my plasma specs. This is a replica from the movie Spirit Snatchers. And they actually work? Yes, they do. To be honest, I'm pretty surprised myself. I'm really sorry that you have died, but don't worry too much about it. Life goes on. At least for you it does. Hey, cheer up. There's no better place to die than an ar arcade. <clears throat> now you can spend the rest of your life while well, the rest of your death surrounded by fun video games. Oh my god, these cutscenes go on a bit. Yes, okay. We can play some games and then I'll be able to go home. Take revenge on the bullies, then you can move on. Okay. Okay, basically I just need to beat the high scores. So, I think this is the one we were just playing in the intro. I didn't see what the high score was. It would be nice if it showed you what the uh, high score to beat was on the top of the screen, like a proper arcade game. So you can see how well you're doing. Okay, so you're not getting points for how high you go. You're just getting points for picking up those yellow things, whatever they are. Oh, the clouds are getting mixed in with the clouds in the background now. Wait, I have no idea how close or far I am from the high score. A demon reached heaven. Time to help the next one. Okay, now we do it again. There doesn't seem to be any difficulty in this. Like, this could just go on forever, right? There's no enemies. I feel like this is quite undercooked for an idea. Definitely needs some extra challenge or something more skill-based for you to try and achieve while you're picking up the yellow things. Reach the heaven. Time to help the next one. <coughs> okay, same level again. I might end up having to just kill myself, because it seems like this could just keep going on. Maybe I'll get to a thousand. Do you think that's the high score to beat? I really think it needs to tell you up front. I probably missed it on the title screen for the game, but it should tell you when you're in the game as well. It feels like a very, very basic Tobu Tobu Girl. Or a game that I used to have on my phone called Happy Poo Jump. We missed a few there, never mind. We've nearly got to a thousand, then I'll, I'll uh, jump off. Yeah, it's exactly the same, again. So I really don't know... 
This wouldn't be very good in the arcades. So they wouldn't make any money from it. There'd be one kid on there playing it for like 10 hours a day. But at least the physics feel good, right? In terms of the uh, jumping controls. You've got plenty of movement in the air, which is nice. Maybe a bit too much because it makes it too easy to line up with the uh, platforms. Alright, we've passed a thousand. Shall I jump off now? Yeah, there is, there is no end in sight. Okay. Your score, 1030. I really hope that was enough. Five arcade tickets received. Enter your name. Oh, enter your initials. Nick, high school registered. GNRL1393. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, I think I got the high score? It says done. So I'm guessing that's good. Alright, next one. Monster. Again, nice use of the theme. Mercenaries Organization for Noodle Space Travel and Extraterrestrial Resources. Okay, what do I need to do in this one? There's no explanation as to what's going on. Can I shoot? My score's going up for some reason. And I died. I have no clue what was going on there whatsoever. No ticket received. How to play. Dodge asteroids, defeat boss monsters. Shoot bosses, move. Noodles, collect fuel, asteroids are damage. Right, space noodles to refill fuel. What are space noodles? Don't ask. Okay. Uh, I feel like the uh, collision detection is very broken. What the hell? It doesn't take the depth into account at all. That's terrible. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to get through this. They all just come straight out the middle of the screen. Am I just supposed to stay right on the outside? Warning! Monster versus monster... Oh, I skipped that. Okay, what the... Why is the crosshair completely separate from where the ship is? That's so weird. Uh, my light just turned on really bright. For some reason. Am I even hurting him? Oh, we're going to run out of fuel first. That's so awkward. Why is it like that? Okay, we did it. Let's try and sort the lights out. There we go. Victory, plus 50. And then we do it again. Maybe staying right on the edge of the screen is the better idea. This one definitely needs some more work to take into account the... Uh, distance, because this just doesn't work as it is at the minute. Okay. Again, I don't remember seeing a high score that I need to beat. Cool effect, though. Like, it's cool that it looks 3D. Although it doesn't really act like it's 3D. And same boss again. I'm guessing there's no variation in any of the games. And does this boss actually hurt you or not? It just sort of floats around. <clears throat> we did it! Again, I could probably just keep playing this forever because it doesn't seem like anything changes in terms of difficulty. Maybe I should... I don't know, it's going to take a long time to get to a thousand on this one. What should I try and aim for? Maybe 500? Alright, monster versus monster. Here we go. It's kind of weird that you don't see any bullets coming out of the ship either, even though I'm firing. It's just the little blue dot in the middle of the crosshair that's moving. Okay, victory! Let's keep going, I guess. Get to 500. Or should we do one more boss fight, just in case? Hmm. 
Monster versus monster again. Anything different this time? No, it's even got the same music. I'm not really sure what the challenge is here. It seems like I can even go into him and it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm just going to stay in the middle now and let, my, let myself die. Even that's not happening. Kill me! There we go. Game over. 675. Is that good? Is that bad? Who knows? Let's see. Three tickets received. Oh no, that wasn't the high score. Okay. Let's try out some other ones. Let's see. Monster Truck Tour. Stay on the street and don't crash into objects. Steer and drift. So we've got to be 723. Okay. <coughs> What does it mean by drift? Oh, there's the there's no way of pausing once you're in the game either. So I'm pressing A and B, but they don't seem to be doing anything. Maybe this one's not fully programmed yet. So I had to be what seven hundred and something. Again, it doesn't seem like there's anything to do. It could just go on forever. And it's going to take a while to get to 700. Oh, okay, if you hold down B, I think it turns a bit sharper. Maybe. Just trying to figure it out. Slightly sharper. Seems like hitting the palm trees doesn't do anything either. Or is that what that battery meter is in the corner there? Yeah, okay. Let's try that again. Oh my god, getting to 700, that's going to take a long time. <coughs> Alright, let's try again. Maybe if I keep B held down, it's easier to do the corners. Yeah, that seems easier. A tiny bit of oversteer going on. I think if it goes blue, does that mean that I've been hit? It'd be nice. Oh, the background does move. Nice. A little bit of parallax scrolling going on there, too. Oh, okay, when I'm holding B, the uh, score isn't changing. Okay. I didn't realise that. I just wasted a lot of time then. It'd be nice if there was like health pickups that appeared every now and then on the road or like obstacles for you to dodge or something or some of the cars or some variation in the track design might be nice. There's not really much to do. And the hit detection for when you touch the trees doesn't quite seem right either. Okay, we got a ticket. Maybe we'll come back to this one again. Let's see what's down here. Nessie. Okay. Help the demons to escape from hell and reach heaven. Jump. That's all right. Avoid the spiky mines. Okay. <coughs> right. Oh, the... Uh, Controls are very strange on this one. Okay. <coughs> Next race.
I like the idea of it being a minigame collection, but maybe the developer could have focused on making a few better games rather than a lot of weirdly put together games without much challenge. Let's add on to the jump this time. Because this feels like it could be a game in itself if you fleshed it out. Same with that rally one. Oh dear, score 70. And maybe that's the idea, maybe they're going to turn these into separate games in the future. But some of these scores are so high, I don't really see people spending the time to uh, try and beat them all. Even if there is a nice incentive to do so. To, you know, obviously escape, get you back your own body and stuff. It's a nice concept. I guess I need a better jump to get those ones. Let's try it. So I gotta beat 400, that's still a lot more to uh, try and do. Oh dear. Okay. I'll probably leave that one there. Let's see what else there is to do. Let's try and speak to this person here. Hi there. Wait a second. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see dead people. No big deal. Don't you think that is creepy? No, get used to it. It's a bit annoying when some of them keep screaming in agony. Oh dear. <laughs> She's got noise cancelling headphones. Okay. <coughs> Let's see what game's next. Did we do that one? That's a racing one. Or Maybe that's it? Is there one more over here? Let's check this one out. Oh yeah, we've had a look at that one. Did I not beat the score for that one? Oh yeah, 900. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Go through that. How long have we been playing? 21 minutes. I'd feel bad leaving it there, but... I don't really, uh, Feel like trying to beat these scores, which are way higher than what I was getting. And the games aren't super replayable either so I'm probably going to end it there. I do apologise if I was a little bit down on this one but maybe it's just not my kind of game but maybe people watching would appreciate it. So um, like I said before while I'm not going to go through the actual uh, numbers here I'm just going to go through and um, score it here. So I'll give it good points for originality and technical because it does seem like they've done a lot with the engine. And the graphics are really nice too. Uh, I would say the gameplay lets it down in some respects. And I can't really rate the audio too highly because I've heard a lot of these songs before. So I think um, some of them might just be placeholder music and stuff. Uh, but I'll definitely rate it quite well on theme. So there we go. That was uh, Ghost in the Arcade. And the next one is called Lightseeker. Alright, we're back with the next game. This is Lightseeker by Zanny Pixels. Let's begin a new game. An ancient thing awoke in the north. Wherever his shadow fell, the skies grew dark, and the world burned. Survivors took refuge in the dungeons, vast ruins deep beneath the earth. Some of them dare to wander the dark in search of long forgotten light. Whatever any of that means. Be careful with your rations. If it runs out, you can starve to death when you enter a new room. I got sickness after being bitten by a rat. I'm glad I had some herbs with me. You find some rations. Okay, weird. Is that me using my sword? The uh, walking animation's a little strange. And there's some slowdown for some reason. I heard a soldier saying that he saw a faint light far deep into the dungeons. Pilgrim's Rest. If you feel tired, rest by the fire. Not yet. If you lose your armor out there in the darkness, you die. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on with the music. It kind of sounds like there's sound effects as well. Welcome, I'm an alchemist of Syndra. 
<coughs> my wares have a good selection of herbs and potions. Okay, I think I'll be okay for now. Potions cure everything. I wish they could heal my broken heart. Oh dear. Yeah, that whip. Whip noise. Is that me walking? Hello, darling. I need something to protect you. Iron. Yeah, noise is going on. Uh, sure, can I buy a shield? I don't have enough rations. Is that the currency as well, then? Okay, let's go make some money. The dungeon. Is this the dungeon? My father misses our homeland in Catria. He says it was near an endless sea, but the ocean dried up when the world ended. Okay. Is that an enemy? Maybe? Did I get anything? Uh, not sure. Am I just supposed to uh, avoid them? Oh, why am I going so slow all of a sudden? Game over. You're lost in the darkness. Okay. I don't see how this plays into the theme at all so far. Let's try that again. Yeah, there was definitely something weird making me go a lot slower because I'm walking a lot faster there. Alright, let's go again. Is it going to be the same layout? Yep. Okay, I guess we can just ignore that guy then. No, do I need to try and kill this guy? I couldn't tell whether that was actually hurting him or not, and now it's going really slow again. Oh, okay, are they... Did the rat kill me? Okay, the rat killed me. Alright, let's try that again. <clears throat> Do I get anything? Oh, the bullet just went straight through me that time and nothing happened. Am I getting anything for killing him or not? I really can't tell. Okay. Can we take him out from there? No. Is that hitting him? Apparently that is. Right, don't touch the spikes. Got it. We can kill this rat. That only takes one hit. Okay, maybe you don't get anything for killing anyone. But I got a herb out of that treasure chest. There's some weird sound effects going on still. Anything down here? Nope. Oh. There's another weird sound effect. What's happening? Am I missing something? Let's see if I get anything for doing that. Nope, but the rat disappeared. What are they? Spiders? Are they taking damage? I don't think I can hurt the spiders then. Oh, I can. It just takes a long time. Good job they don't move. Yeah, I think this game needs a lot of work. Obviously, it's uh, it was only a three-month game jam, so you can't expect everything to be super polished, but... Yeah, a lot of work in the uh, animation and hitbox department. Right, what is in here? You find chain armor. Armor plus four. Um, do I need to do anything, or does it... You have ten hunger. You are starving. You're using a soldier's plate. Okay, so pressing select brings up, like, information. I guess I can... I presume that says rations. You have 22 rations, eat one. Yes. You ate a ration. Okay, now let's see what that says. You have nine hunger. You're starving. <coughs> okay, do I need to... Oh my god. Do I need to go through and eat nine of them? You have 21. Eat one? Yes. And you have to press start every time as well and then go back down to rations. Okay, so that's nine. That's eight. That's seven. Uh, 
That's six. Let's see if that's actually doing anything. You have five hunger. Well, I didn't say I'm starving. Maybe I can leave it on that. Let's eat one more. Okay, now we can press on, maybe? I don't know whether I hurt the rat first or if the rat hurt me. <clears throat> There's some more weird sound effects happening for no reason. And I got a ring of protection. Armor plus two. Okay. Are these already dead? Is that... The one at the top is moving. <clears throat> oh, that one's moving too. Sorry if I sound all bunged up, by the way. I'm suffering with a bit of a cold. What is that? Is that an item? Is that an enemy? I don't know what I'm looking at there. Oh, okay, I can't walk into that. Okay, game over. Do I get to keep anything? You have six hunger. You are using a soldier's blade. You can't see the rest of your stats at all, so I don't know what kind of armor I've got or anything. Need a stronger weapon. Let's try... How much? Costs 50 rations. No, I don't have enough. There's no way of seeing how much of anything you've got either. That's something that they could try and improve on in the future. Apparently that one just doesn't hurt you. I'm going to just speed run my way through this. The frame rate really struggles when there's things moving on the screen. It'd be nice if there was maybe a HP bar or something for the enemy so you can see how much damage you're doing. Or something visual to see whether you're actually causing any damage or not because you could hit this like 10 times and not even realise it was taking any damage until it just disappears off the screen. Okay, got some herbs. Are they health? Let's try. <coughs> Yes. It did nothing. Let's try a potion. Oh, I have no potions. Why give me the option to try having one then? What happened? I died before I even got close to it that time. I think this game's kind of broken. Let's try doing it again. We've only been going for nine minutes. We can try and get a bit further at least see whether there's another dungeon or another level to it or something. Oh, it's already dead. I'm memorising this intro bit off by heart at this point. <coughs> Die, rat. It'd be nice if the enemies dropped something, because it does just feel like you may as well just ignore them all. Or if there was an experience system or something, that would be good. And what's the point of him up there? You're not going to go that way. Okay. I just walked into the room and died then. Maybe this just isn't my kind of game, but I'm not really understanding how to get anywhere in this. Can I kill him? Oh, no, that's just someone I spoke to before. Do I have to worry about my hunger? Maybe that's a problem. <coughs> Let's have some rations, I guess. I've got 31. It is keeping track, then. Let's 
I better not use too many because I can uh, get some better weapons. Do I get rations for killing things? It's just not telling me, maybe. Let's see how many have I got now. I had 30. Yeah, I've got 32. Nice. So there is a reason to kill things. It just doesn't explicitly say so. Maybe if I get a better weapon, I can kill these faster too. Oh my god, they are just sponges. I don't know what that noise is. Something's happening. Do we open the box? It looks like I've taken loads of damage for some reason. I'm not sure what the herbs are doing. Let's check our hunger. You have 11 hunger. You're starving. So that didn't change the hunger at all. I better eat some rations. I don't want to die again randomly. I think that's why I died before anyway. Let's see what it says now. Eight hunger. I'm still starving. There definitely needs to be a way where you could select rations and then select the number that you want to eat, rather than having to go back through the start menu every time. So that is quite slow and painful. <coughs> Let's see what it says now. Four hunger. What happened? I think I might have to stop playing it here because it just seems a bit glitched, but interesting concept for a game, but um, certainly needs a lot of work to make it really playable. So yeah, I kind of struggled with the gameplay on that. Again, I don't know whether that's because it's not my kind of game and I don't usually play these sort of dungeon crawlers, but as one of the judges, people are wanting my personal opinions on the games. Um, it's very hard to judge something objectively if you have not so much experience in one area and more in another, so maybe things will balance out with some of the other, other judges. Uh, from a technical point of view, I feel like there's a lot that needs improving, especially in terms of the frame rate, in terms of the animations, especially the walking animations a bit uh, jumpy, and the way the enemies don't respond at all. I'm not really sure how to put originality, maybe somewhere in the middle, because there's not that many games of this style on the Game Boy, but it is quite derivative and there's nothing unique uh, particularly about this game. I don't think it would stand out if it was on any other system, so I'll put that somewhere in the middle. Graphics, for the most part, are quite nice. I like all the different uh, tile sets that have been used, especially the brick walls with the candles in, that looks really nice. The sprite for the character. I think could do with some work. It's a bit weird that his head stays completely still when you're walking down as well. Um, yeah, I'd say the graphics are quite good. Audio is um, a little broken, I think, because it was playing random sound effects. And in terms of theme, I don't really see how this fits the theme at all. It just seems like a general dungeon crawler. There's no real mention of you being a monster or controlling a monster or anything like that. So, anyway, that was Lightseeker. Now, onto the next game, which is called Kaiju Kaikai. Kai. That one sounds interesting. Okay, this game is called Kaiju Kaikai Kai, Developer Sunny Chow the Guy. Okay, this one, if I remember right, is another set of mini games, but obviously based around the concept of being a kaiju. So, let's begin with Frosty Crisis, where I guess I'm trying to chase this ice cream van. Ice cream! Frosty ice cream. Gonna sell some ice cream. Not for long! Not with a giant monster there. Is that Kaiju Kai Kai? I think it might be. And what does that mean? Is he hungry for ice cream? Do I have to do anything? 
Why is she staring at me? I better go faster. Okay, just mash the A button. And go into, uh... Okay. When do I have to start mashing the B button? I can punch the power lines, okay. There's this, like, giant monster track and field. Why are the power lines not connected to anything? Am I getting closer? I think so. Ah, my thumb's starting to hurt. Ah, don't eat me. No. Ah. Bam, bam, crisis. <coughs> okay, time to chase a donut this time, I guess. Stop! The donut is fake. Don't eat it. Ah. Oh my god, there's some tanks. Everyone attack! <coughs> no. Oh, made him sad. And angry. So I guess I just run into the tanks and avoid the spikes. That seems to be working. There's no button prompts or anything this time. Oh no, I hurt my foot. And again. Ow. Wow, there's even some voice samples. Not sure what the bar at the top's trying to represent there. Are we going too fast? I don't really know what I'm aiming for here. I think I'm near the end. If that bar means anything. I'm sorry, don't hurt me. No, ah. Okay, that's it. Just get to the tanks and throw them away. It's got nothing to do with eating donuts. And this time we are going fishing by the looks of it. it definitely plays really well into the theme this game does. Very nice fun graphics too. Really nice big chunky sprites. Okay, what's going on this time? Why is she on our carrier? I don't know, maybe you should expel her. Why am I sat on an aircraft carrier going fishing? Okay, is this one a fishing minigame? Mash the A button again? Okay, follow the button combinations. Are the aeroplanes going to try and attack me and kick me off the carrier or something? Oh, I fished up a submarine. Not what I was expecting. Okay, I think she was happy about fishing up a submarine. Now I guess we just do it again. Mash the A button. I wonder what happens if you mess up here. Not that I'm planning to. I guess you just lose one of those anchors on the top left. Alright, we found a UFO that time. Interesting. She's not happy about it. What are you hoping to find in there? <clears throat> Am I doing this right or not? I don't know. Seems very easy to get through that button combination. Okay, we've got a second one. I'm surprised the planes haven't done anything to try and sabotage me yet. Oh, right, there we go. Is that what you're after? Yay! Make friends with a whale. Okay. Is that it? That's it! <laughs> we beat the game! I don't really have too much to say about that one, that was very strange. 
a nice little uh, fun minigame compilation with some very interesting uh, sprite work. In terms of gameplay, I can't really rate it that highly. It was very simple. Technical, nice big sprites, quite original, very nice graphics. Music was okay. I definitely rate it very highly for the theme. Now the next game is a game called Slayer the Hawk. Let's check that one out. All right, now we're on to the next game, which is called Slayer the Hawk by Mind Bleach. And I don't hear any sound coming from this one, so I don't know whether there actually is any audio. And I also have no clue what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, hitting people? Maybe I got a heart from that guy whipping me. Is that good or bad? There was no instructions as far as I could tell anyway. Um, is it like joust? Kind of. Boink? Have I got to hit him on the head? Is that it? That rat was not fresh. Okay, am I doing things right or not? I think I'm just supposed to hit people. I guess this is me being the monster. Um... There's no score, there's no time limit, there's no story. Oh, I can turn around as well. I didn't think I'd be able to go backwards. Um, there's a three on the top left for some reason. Two. Does that mean I've got to take out two more people? The background's making my eyes go funny. Uh, no, that didn't seem to make any difference. I really don't know what, what I'm looking at here. And uh, there's just random speech bubbles coming out. Prophecy ruined. Some ninja guy then. This isn't making any sense at all. Do a flip. Have I... Did I pass? Have I got onto the second level? Give me your liver. What? I think I'm doing it right, maybe? It says five. Does that mean there's five more ninjas to take out? Fatality. Better luck next time. Was that to me or to them? Oh, there we go. We do have some. We do have some sound. Kind of. And it's also really loud. There's no music, there's just some plinky sound effects. That was my fault for not having the right capture card plugged in. Really don't get it. Am I supposed to be pressing B to attack people? Oh, I grabbed their weapon maybe? Coming through. Am I doing it right? I've got something attached to my foot. I really have no clue. Okay, I can throw it away. Looks like I can press B to put my feet out for some reason. Is that how I grabbed the weapon last time? I think he wants to grab his liver for some reason. That's all he keeps saying. Okay, he's dead. So you don't need to keep moving. You can just stay next to the enemies and they don't do anything. Oh, apparently that's all of them. Nice, nice pyjamas. Okay, 
Enchanted Woodlands situation. There's some very strange text in this game. What are these noises? The Hammer Brothers are after me, throwing boomerangs. I wonder how many different environments there are. I wasn't expecting it to go on this long. It's so weird. You don't need to do anything. You can just bash into the enemies from any direction by the looks of it. I really don't understand where, where the challenge or anything comes in. I feel like this game wasn't really finished. There doesn't really seem to be any game loop as such. I'm not sure what they're doing either. Are they shooting something? There's another guy there. I mean, I quite like the idea of having the text box come up. That's quite fun. Rocky Cliffs, okay. Are those their names? What? Is everyone here named Rocky Cliffs? I don't even see anyone. Oh, there's someone, I think. 29, oh my god. I'm gonna go a bit faster here. Maybe I can just do that and just move from the bottom of the screen to the top. I'm going to have to turn it down a bit because those sound effects are really great in. 20 left, 19 left. I think I've taken out most of the people on the top. It's an interesting concept, and I like how smooth the scrolling is for the screen. I could see this evolving into something like a modern take on Defender, or Fantasy Zone, or something like that. It has potential, but in its current state, I really, uh, really don't think it was ready for people to play yet. But stick at it. I can definitely see something interesting with this game in the future. Maybe add an attack for the bird as well. Maybe some power-ups between levels would be cool. Maybe a high score or something to aim for. Maybe change the speech bubble so they make a bit more sense. Hey, we did it. Heroes humiliated. What? That's all? Okay. Evil wins. Yay, go evil. Congratulations. Question mark. Now you can play something better now. Or keep waiting. I'm going to keep waiting. Let's see. Let's see who made this. Okay. Yes, I did. Keep going. Mind bleach, mind bleach, mind bleach. Congratulations, mind bleach. You made a game. That has potential. It's not... It's not as bad as you might think it is. Sound. Sorry about that one. Yeah. Um. Yes, we get it. Catering. That's the most important bit. 
Okay, I'm going to leave these credits to, to play out. So, technical support, Gunpei, Yokoi. I mean, technically, it wouldn't have been possible without him. Oh my god. <laughs> this is hilarious. You really had so much fun writing these. Guess you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to give it an extra point in originality just for these credits. <laughs> Push all the buttons you like. Okay. I'm actually, I'm actually pressing everything. Nothing's happening. Oh no! I lost the manual. Is that it? Did you get the note? Not yet. I was going to say, did you get bored? Let's finish it with a proper send off. Okay. The end. Is it actually? Bye. Goodbye. Ah. Uh, okay, we're done. There we go. That was Slayer the Hawk. Definitely something that I started enjoying a lot more as I carried on playing that. So here we are with the next game. This one is called Chanty, and this is a pirate RPG. From what I remember, this one has like rhythm game segments in there as well, which is a really cool concept. And we've already got some nice piratey background music here. Lord have mercy. Look who done come back from Davy Jones's locker. Blast your luck and the winds that carry you. I'm not going to try and do a pirate accent for this. I don't know what kind of de deal you made with the devil, but I'll have you know, I had me good money riding on you kicking that bucket. <laughs> Lost me ten pieces at eight, your stubbornness did. Oh my god, is the whole game going to be written like this? I'll just put your food and board on Angus's tab after all. Uh, he the one that brought you here, ain't he? The font is a little difficult to read as well. I would say it's uh, maybe not the best idea to have like squiggly handwritten style font on a 8-bit game. It's quite difficult to actually read. Uh, lucky for you, the captain's got a bit of a soft spot for lost souls like yourself. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but for readability it'd be nice to have something a little more less uh, serif, I think that's what it's called. Uh, now listen up, love. Ain't no room for freeloaders round here if you catch my drift. So if you don't mind. I just remembered I should be recording the game separately to the stream as well. There we go. Uh, sorry, if you don't mind, uh, would you kindly bugger off and make room for the spending folk? Why don't you go find the captain and thank him proper for saving your skin? He's drinking himself into a stupor downstairs. Can't miss him. Oh my god, stop talking! And don't even think about taking anything that doesn't belong to you. Well, obviously the first thing I'm going to do is go to the treasure chest. And I'm not allowed in. A portrait of a ragged and intimidating figure. I was just checking to see whether it has eight directions of movement or not, and it does not. It only has four. I can hear the barmaiden mumbling and cussing inside. I'd best not disturb her. Ahoy matey, welcome to the brazen tankard. You look like you could use a drink and a good tail or two, what do you say? Sure. Back in the day, or ack in the day, I don't know what's happened to the text box there. Um, Back in the day, chanties were sung on pirate ships to keep the crew's spirits high during long voyages and fierce battles. Song of hope and strength they were, and had the power to inspire even the most cowardly sailor to fight like a lion. I've seen it with my own two eyes, matey. I've seen crews, uh, crews of scurvy pirates, tired and beaten down, suddenly spring to life when they hear songs of bravery and loyalty on the glory of the pirate life. It be like magic, I tell you. Oh my god, I'm really struggling with this pirate dialect. Ahoy there, matey. My name be Angus Graves, and I be captain of the Qu 
crow's folly. A few moons ago, me men and I spied ye adrift and have ye have halt? Halt? Is that a you? Yeah, see, the font is really, really weird. Hold ye aboard our ship. You were in a sorry state, lad, shivering, pale, and ranting like a rabid mutt. M mice, you muttering. Midst, that's a D, okay. Yeah, this font definitely needs some work. Midst your muttering, we heard ye belt out songs like a true chanty man. Songs bout a squid like terror and how hoots done tore ye vessel to shreds. Ye saw it, didn't ye, lad? Ah, pull up a chair and land an ear, matey. Lend an ear. That E looks like an A as well. And um, learn some more pirate history. Okay, I guess we're having a pirate lecture. Long ago, my ancestors, the Nightingale pirate Nathaniel Greaves, found a hidden treasure hoard on a far-off land. Midst his ill-begotten gains was a grimoire, old as the sea herself, and said to have been penned by the devil's own hand. The tomes, oh, the marina's rhymes. I think that's what it said. He figured its pages be filled with bewitchery and dark magic chants. The kind that could turn the tides of fortune in his favour. For they'd make his men invincible in battle, and his ship ride any storm. A gifted tunesmith, Nathaniel, forged roaring chanties using the rhymes, and scoured the seven seas for the finest minstrels to join his brethren. I'm really struggling to read this. Okay. As one, they raised their battle cry against the towns of the West Indies. Pillaging, plundering, and sinking any vessel that dared cross their path. But on a fateful night, Nathaniel set his sight on a Spanish man of war. The N Nuestra Senora de la Gloria, loaded with gold and jewels beyond count. He gave chase, and the two vessels traded broadsides for hours on end. Twas then that two brigs joined the Gloria, firing a hail of cannon fire. Devoid of shot and sinking fast, Nathaniel was at his wit's end, naught else. To turn to but the tomes hither the tomes hither or forbidden hither a uh, or ra ra forbidden rituals something forbidden rituals and so he belted out a chanty so evil a great terror rose from the deep eight writhing arms thick as main masts it had and eyes red as hellfire nathaniel thought the tome's magic would bend the monster to his will but it unleashed hell upon them all, nary a soul left standing in its wake. And so Nathaniel met his end, sinking with the Gloria and her precious cargo. I've been searching for this treasured land, for it belongs to me clan by birthright. For years the beast stood, watching o'er the Gloria's watery grave. But now, thanks to ye, I know where the foul creature be guarding her treasure. But for I claim me booty, I be on it guest for the lost pages of the tome. For in am um, lies the secret to lay the foul creatures to rest once and for all. I be needing a gang of sea savvy chanty men on this guest land. Get on this quest, lad. Land on this quest, lad. And together we'll revive Nathaniel's chanties or spread fear wherever they be heard. Your singing voice be gruff and powerful, lad. Will ye lend your pipes to me caves? Cause? To me cause. Aye, let's do it. That's the spirit, lad. I knew you had it in you. Now, for ye can join this here crew, ye must first affix your mark on the code. Oh my god, the Dialogue's a bit long-winded. 
I think you could cut out half of this and it would still make just as much sense. Set your sights for northeast and scuttle to the crow's folly with all haste. Enter the captain's quarters and sign the log, log that will bind ye to the brethren. Ah, no dallying for the winds, wait for no man, off ye go. Well, 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 if it ain't Angus's newest four-legged scallywag. What be your rush, lad? Can't be lingering for a drink now, can ye? Ah, I caught wind of your talk back yonder. Lad, did you really chance upon the glorious watery tomb, speaking... Speak plain and tell me straight where she be resting. <clears throat> A vast ye cap and red beard. Bully and me chanty men, are we? Are ye? Nothing but a little playful banter, Angus. It all be ungood fun. The code of the brethren demands respect to all who hoist the black flag. Aye, but your man ain't yet put his name to the code now, has he? And why should he, you see, by that sorry excuse for a captain be nothing... But a bilge sucking scallywag helming that resigy raggedy vessel oh his straight into the jaws of the kraken without a care in the world. Oh nay he did nay. Gather round me lads and ye their greenhorn. You're in for a showing of the rhymes true might sooner than you thought. Ready your uh, instruments and strike a merry tune, me hearties. For I be fixing to put an end to this scurvy dog's entire reckoning. Listen up, lad. Keep time with the tune and hit the proper note soon as it drops. Now raise your fists and join in our song. Okay, now we get to do some gameplay. For some reason. How do I know... Okay. It's like Beat Mania, but it doesn't actually have the uh, icons for the buttons on the bar. Ah! The uh, layout for this doesn't make any sense! Oh my god! This is way too difficult for the first song in the game. What the hell? I'm usually good at rhythm games. Maybe the timing's a bit off as well. We should be a little bit more lenient, I feel like, if you do it just after the note. It should still count, not just shake the screen and tell you you've missed it. You've missed it. Okay, there's a lot that can be improved with that. First of all, um, put the actual icons for which button affects which bit there underneath it. Have some sort of score going down the side as well, just like any other rhythm game that would be useful. Maybe a bit more of a tell that you've actually hit the notes, like where it usually shouts nice or good or great or something like that. You should have something like that on there and make it a little bit more lenient so you can hit them just after they've passed as well. Because there's a few things that I can see getting quite frustrating. Uh, seems like we lost ourselves a couple of mateys on that fight. They'll be out cold for a while. No time to waste since you're going out. Find us some folk to join our crew. Off you go. Don't let the captain's fancy lineage fool you, lad, for when it comes to singing, he screeches like a blasted gull in a storm. Tis a cruel twist of fate, ain't it? Okay, I thought we were on a boat. Apparently we're not. Are you a real pirate? I don't know, honestly. 
The candle's dim flickering light casts an eerie shadow on the wall. If you're looking for work, you've got to talk to Captain Angus over there. He's always on the lookout for fresh meat. Okay, I think we're done in here. Let's go find somewhere else to go. My husband's inside playing cards again. Alright, this fella got a decent hand. Angus sent you. Tell him I'm in. As soon as I get this... Oh, the uh, text box is broken a little bit again there. Um, as soon as I get this bloke's gold in my pockets, I'll head to the Crown's Folly. Shelves filmed, filmed with mouldy old books on sword fighting and pirate lore. Anything interesting upstairs? In the distance, I can see the ship mast rising above the rooftops. Whoa, why did I look? Why did I look? Oh dear. Some reused assets from earlier in the game there. Alright, nothing to do in that house. Let's keep looking. Nothing in that one. There's a boat. That's where I thought we would start. What's going on there? Oh, is that supposed to be like me going behind it or something? Ooh, have we found some treasure? A treasure map? Uh, this map be stained with age. Its faded ink lines be marking the coasts and isles of the Caribbean. Cool, we got a treasure map. And some different locations. Do I get to keep it? Apparently not. A chest made of durable wood with a sturdy latch and a heavy padlock. I'm not allowed the contents. That's kind of interesting, being able to walk behind the scenery like that. Wow, I've never seen a Game Boy game do that before. I could probably set sail on the ship. No, I best not touch anything while the captain will have my hide. I think it'd be fun if it did let you do that and then suffer the consequences. His walk's a bit weird. Oh, it's alright now. On that last screen, it was a little bit juddery. Not sure why. Someone locking up their door to keep strangers out of the house. Okay. As they should be. Um, this bit here might be good to make it actually look like a cliff so you don't get confused where you can't go down there. Should we try this house as well? Okay, we can go in that one. Is there anything in here? No. There's another pirate. Can't you see I'm hiding? I saw a posse of kinsmen arrive out the dock near the... War... Warren... Oh, warehouse. The warehouse. Let me come with you on your journey. I'd hate to cross the... Commodore's path if you catch me drift. Okay. Is he going to be part of my party? No? There's nothing over there. Okay. Why not block it off with some more palm trees? This road be leading to Fort Charles. Best not to attract the attention of the King's Finest. Okay, not allowed that way. Right, where am I supposed to go now then? If anywhere. I never know in these games whether this is everything it has to offer or whether there's more because obviously they're mostly unfinished demos. Again, very impressed with that, being able to go behind the scenery. Uh, tentacles, you say? Bah, be off with you. I've seen enough hentai to know where this be going. Okay. Old church. Am I not allowed in? Just gonna hear a weird guy talking about hentai. Okay. Uh, can I go this way? Do I inspect the gravestones? No. 
That'd be nice to have a little Easter egg, like here, here lies Link. Oh, there we go. Here's like here lies Sparky. Whoever that is. Is that a reference to something? Okay, not allowed to go that way either. Um, we haven't been left. Let's try this. There's a well. Well, it's a well. Uh, this dock is off limits to civilians. Please turn back. Port Royal Warehouse. I'm impressed with how much there is for a game jam demo. How long have we been playing? 20 minutes. You got a job offer? Whatever it is, it can't be worse than this place. Count me in. Okay, I don't think it's working properly because I think these guys are supposed to be joining me. I have a shipment of sugar I need delivered to Nassau. Look like you know your way around the sea. Okay, sure. Okay, can I talk to them now? But I just got the job. Okay, maybe that's not programmed in yet either. Let's see what's up here. There's another boat and another house. Let's see what's in this one. Won't budge. Can I interact with that boat? No. The Commodore's frigate scared off all the fish. Oh well, I guess I'll have to wait. Alright, and un unless I'm mistaken, that's everything. Um is there more, or is this somewhere I've already been? Yeah, I've already been here, haven't I? Right, well, I'll try going back to the tavern that I was in before then, see whether I can do anything about this job that I picked up. But I feel like this might be it for content in this version of the game. Let's see. Why you be lingering here? Okay, I think that's just repeating something I've already seen. That's it, I guess. We've been everywhere. Seems like an interesting premise for a game. Definitely a lot of potential there. Also, maybe a little bit too wordy. I feel like if you want to mix it up with some actual gameplay, try and balance the two a little bit better. And maybe give a bit of a direction as to where to go afterwards. And the um, the bit with the actual rhythm game needs a bit of work in order to make it a little bit more playable. But definitely a cool concept. I like the idea of doing sea shanties and things. And if you actually get to control the boat and find the treasure and stuff, that would be really cool. Um, in terms of the theme, I don't really see how you're the monster. You just seem like a general... I don't even know what you are. Are you a pirate or are you just like a guy looking for work or something? Yeah, not too sure about that, but overall pretty good. Quite enjoyed my time with that. And seems like there's a lot of potential, so um, keep it up. I'll be interested to see where this one goes in the future. So there we go. That was Chanty. And the next game is called Hidden Gems. Not by Metal Jesus Rocks. Alright, this one is called Hidden Gems. Let's see what this one's all about. And we actually have a tutorial, so let's try following the tutorial. Let's begin with basic. Basic tutorial. Welcome to Hidden Gems. In this game, you place cards on a board to get the most points. First, let's take a look at the controls. Uh, when your turn starts, a cursor will appear on the cards on the left. Move the cursor with the D-pad and select a card with the A button. With the card on the board, use the D-pad to choose a final position. Press A again to put it down, or B to go back. After you've placed a card, the AI will make a move. Let's take a look at the basic rules of the game. Oh god, I feel like I've got to concentrate a lot for this one. Every card has a shape and up to four directions, up, down, left and right. When you place a card on the board, you will get a point if your card connects to another card that has the same shape as yours. If two cards either don't connect or have different shapes, they don't give any points. 
Okay, makes sense. Let's take a look at the different cards and their values. Here's... I don't understand how this refers to the theme of the jam, you're the, you're, you are the monster. Unless that becomes apparent a bit later on. I'm not quite sure how this one got through to the shortlist. Um, anyway, let's carry on. Here's all the shapes a card can have. In the first row, you can see the most basic shapes. These are cards that have uh, that are dealt before each round. By matching two basic cards, you get five points for each connection. In the second row, these are cards that combine two basic shapes. By fusing cards with basic shapes, you can generate new ones. Please see the fusion tutorial for further info on that topic. Matching two or more of these cards gets you 20 points per match. The third row has the black and white card. The black card doesn't give any points. It is rather special. Oh my god, I'm not going to remember this. It destroys every card that has a match with the card with the black card instead. This doesn't clear any points you already collected, but it creates new opportunities when there are not many fields free. The white card is the ultimate fusion. You have to fuse each basic shape once to create a white card. It awards you 50 points for every match with another white card. This concludes a basic tutorial. Okay, all I got from that is place cards of the same shape next to each other. A fusion tutorial. Cards on your hand can be fused before you place them on the board. To fuse a card, move the cursor over it and press the B button. The card will move up a little and you can move it with the D-pad. Next, move it over the card you want to fuse it with and press the A button. This will fuse the card in your hand with the other one. Let's see what fusing two cards actually means in the game. Okay. You can fuse as many cards as you want, but not all fusions are equal. Fusing two cards with the same shape retains its shape. The directions will be combined. This way you can power up cards before fusing them with other shapes. When fusing cards with different shapes, it's the other way around. Now the shapes are combined to create a new one. But directions are only retained when both cards have them. So getting more valuable shapes with lots of directions is hard. Always make sure that the card you fuse has enough directions. When you manage to fuse a fused card with the missing basic shape... Okay, so if you match red, green and blue together, <coughs> you will get the very valuable white card. Getting a white card with many directions is very difficult but may lead to a lot of points, so always plan ahead accordingly. If you fuse an already fused card that has a shape it already has, or if the end result has no directions, a black card appears. There are some situations where a black card is very useful, like when you need more space on the board or a good card is blocked. Make sure to always take all your options into account. This concludes the fusion tutorial. Take a look at the advanced tutorial for further advice. May as well, while we're here, advanced tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, you will get some tips to master the game. Tip 1, fuse, fuse, fuse before making your move. Try to fuse the remaining cards on your hand, so that way you have more free slots for new cards in your next turn. And starting the turn with already fused cards can be a big help. Tip 2, plan ahead. Before making a move, take a look at the cards of your opponent. That way you can already determine what they can do in their turn. Tip 3. Two plus directions. Try not to put down cards with only one direction as your opponent can try to steal the points in their turn. Tip 4. Less may be more. Sometimes it is better to make less points in the turn if you prevent your opponent from benefiting from your played card. That concludes the advanced tutorial. Have a lot of fun discovering the intricacies of hidden gems. I don't think there's any relevance to being a monster at all. Um, what am I choosing here? Let's just let's just do this and see if we can figure out what to do. Okay, so if I so if I understand it right, if I fuse this blue one with this green one, I'll keep the two directions. Oh, it didn't do anything. Why isn't it doing anything? 
Oh, I need to press A, okay. So now I have a good blue card with two ends on it, I guess. And if I fuse these together, it will only have one end. So... I presume you want to put that one in the corner because it's got the two bits going down and the other bits are blocked. Let's try that. I'm just completely winging it. Okay, it's the AI's turn now. Let's see what they do. See whether that makes any sense. Whoa, I didn't know you could do everything. Why would it do that? It's still only got the same colour that I did. So... If I put that there, is that going to give me a lot of points? 20. I think that was good. Um, am I supposed to have fused each time? So I need one that's facing down. But the only one I have that's facing down is this one. Although I could merge these together and put that one there, right? Am I understanding this right? Why didn't I get any points for that? That should have been a connection, right? With a good card. But I didn't get anything for it. And now there's only two open spots on the map. I feel like this might be better off as a board game rather than uh, a Game Boy game? Am I supposed to put these together as well, just because? Um, okay, that looks good. Do I put it there? Or there? Let's put it there, because it allows you to go around the side, I guess. I still didn't get any points for that. I don't know how... How it decides when I get points. Like, why did why did the opponent get points then if it just put down a basic card? Let's try combining these together. This should get me a lot of points, right? It didn't do anything. I really don't understand what's going on here. Do they need to be the same... Uh... I don't know. That one can go there. That's it, is it? Is that game over? Because nothing else can touch. Right. We can start a new one. Maybe. Let's put that there. I've still only got 20 points. What am I doing wrong? Oh, am I supposed to be matching the colours as well as trying to make the different groups of things? I can't remember what colour that makes. So this should give me points because it's two purple ones. Okay, that worked. Alright, we'll try another match after this. Okay, let's try again. I think I know what to do this time. Uh, it'd be nice if when you hovered over it, it told you, um, like, what colour or what shape was going to come out. It's an interesting concept for a game, for sure. <clears throat> and it makes a, a change to play a puzzle game like this with an AI-controlled computer player. So, oh, why did that happen? Oh, is that because it was a purple one? I can't remember what what I can do with that. Nothing, I guess. What? Oh, I didn't know you could do three in one go.
I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but if I put another red one on top of that triangle, I should get some points, right? Maybe I'm still not completely understanding how... how this... works. Let's try that, see if that does anything. Okay, I've got five points. So what happens if you match something with that white one? I feel like I'm kind of stuck now because if I match that with one of them, it's not going to give me many options. Yeah, that didn't do anything. We'll try again after this. I think I'm slowly getting the hang of it. I, do, I am still suffering from a cold a little bit, so... I was running out of time to, to judge these. So, bear with my uh, slightly slow brain at the minute. I've actually just got a lem sip in here. Uh, can I just give up? There's no start menu at all. That's something that needs to be added in. Oh. Okay, I made a black one. Oh, okay. If you put a black one next to one with an open slot, that's how you clear the board, right? This is impossible. Oh, that didn't clear it. I thought that would clear it off too. Ninety points to ten. Oh my god. That's not gonna do anything because they can't touch each other. Alright, yes, I lost, I get it. Let's try again. Oh I should have tried the different music. Next time. Let's see what we can do here. So Oh, it's the computer's turn first. So if I get this right, if I merge the green, red, and blue. Like that. I can actually make a white diamond. And if I do the same again with three that are all facing up. I don't remember which ones make which colour. Okay, that was a, a lucky guess. I'm doing it. I'm beating the computer. 20 points. Woo. Oh. So that should be a purple. Oh, no. That's a... Uh, another crystal style one. Oh, if I merge those three together, I'll be able to put them two white ones together. Oh, no. They blocked me. So I need to make a black one that's facing to the left. Now, will that make purple? Yes, I can put that there. I'm getting it. They've made another uh, crystal one. I haven't got enough things to make another one. Nice. I'm actually going to win this round. Maybe. Uh, so I need to make a yellow one facing down, but I can't do that. Or a white one facing up, which I also can't do. So, I guess, put a white one there to stop them being able to do it. 
I think there'd be quite a lot of depth in this if you really get the hang of the uh, of the rules. Oh, I can't clear anything out. Why did that one go black anyway? Can I just do that and refresh the board completely? I guess. It shuffles everything back in. I don't think either of us are going to win. Oh, unless I can make a yellow one. Is that yellow? Yay! There we go. I won. Finally. 80 points. Let's listen to the other music. There's a kind of weirdly moody music. And there's a nice upbeat one, too. I'm not going to try a higher difficulty. That was already too much for me at this time of night. So, overall, really enjoyed that. Very good gameplay. Um, kind of alright, technically, as well, with the AI making moves that actually make sense. Quite original. Mm. Basic graphics, and I think they could be more to help you understand what the different combinations would be. But I really can't rate that one for theme at all. I don't really understand how it's ended up being part of the jam at this stage of... Uh, of the competition, but there we go, that was Hidden Gems. Really good game though, congratulations to uh, Rem... Rebus Mind. Strange username, but congratulations to Re... Rebus Mind? Rebus Mind? For making a really cool puzzle game. Definitely something that fits the Game Boy very well, so... Really enjoyed that. And we are down to the final five games, which I will save for the next time that I'm recording. So the next one will be... A game called Abducted. Alright, this next game is called Abducted by Grimrobe Games. And if I remember right, this one is a first-person dungeon crawler, which is very interesting. I don't think there's any sound or music in this one at all, so I'm just going to double check, make sure all my sound levels are right, but I don't think there is any. Okay, you hear a gentle voice in your mind. My child, you've suffered great pain and chose well to fall into the long stillness. I only hope it was not a choice made in despair. You are not alone. You are not lost. You are loved. The mother continues. The life of this world is hurting, and it will hurt before, and it will hurt you before you can return to us. Many here lash out. They do not understand that it is love that brings plenty, not subjugation. That only when all are loved can greatness be achieved in life. It saddens my heart, but not all is lost. You have friends here, allies, that will guide you home, even without understanding what that means. The mother pauses and you feel a strangeness in your dormant body. Ah, the vessel moves. This is your chance to regain control and find your way back. Be safe, my child. We are waiting. Cool air touches your skin. It smells strongly of chemicals. Artificial lights illuminate the area. Damp tracks on the floor suggest you recently came out of the device in front of you. A metallic voice rings behind you. Are you awake now? Can you turn around, please? Press left and right to turn. Don't be scared. This drone is the only mobile unit I was able to hack into. We don't have much time before the lab is totally locked down, and we can't be here when that happens. I want to get you home, wherever that is. Let's hope you can move. Follow me, uh, the drone. The drone heads down the hall. Press up and down to move. Pretty interesting to see a first-person game like this running on the Game Boy. You are being held in this pod. It's deactivated. Uh, I've lost where they were taking me, I think. Press up or A to move through doors. I hope there's a map. You are being held in this pod. It's deactivated. No way have I just gone around in a circle. It's really difficult to see where you're actually going. That's the same one again. No. 
Okay, through the door. Straight forward, there we go. Your ship is in silo B, to the left, but the door's shut. Don't worry, we aren't getting another way. The drone moves on. There's a lot of private security past this door, and it's set to lock behind you. You're going to have to protect yourself. So I grabbed these. A compartment opens in the drone. You received your ray gun. You received your uniform. Take these too, in case you get hurt. You received two med gels. Sorry I can't do more, but this drone is under repair. <clears throat> There's a cargo elevator at the other side of the storage. Get there and we'll meet in person at ground level. Good luck. The drone leaves. Your uniform has a built-in interface. Press select to toggle on the minimap. Oh god, we do have one. Press start to view your status and inventory. Okay, I don't know why you would want it turned off. We have items, we have Psy, not enough MP. And we have status. 15 out of 0. That seems wrong. Okay, looks like a bunch of other stats for different items, maybe. A renter cop gets in the way. What will you do? Oh, wow, there is sound effects. That scared me. You hit for one damage. The enemy strikes. You suffer one damage. <coughs> I don't know how much health the enemy's got. Let's see what else we can do. I don't think I've got anything there. Your powers are still dormant. Okay, keep firing, I guess. We did it. It's a crate. Can you open it? Of course. Got 120 something. Another one. Alright, oh, there's nothing in that one. The thing is, once you've got the minimap, there's no reason to actually look at the game at all, because you can't tell where you are in the game. It's a shame there's not more to do in the fights either. I guess later on, once you get some extra abilities and stuff, it might get more interesting. <coughs> I'm also not really sure how this fits the theme of You Are the Monster. I don't know what about this. It seems like you've been captured by monsters, not that you are one. Seems like a... Just a dungeon crawling sci-fi game. I missed. No. Oh my god, that sound effect's really loud. I hope it's not too loud for anyone watching. We did it. Let's open a box. No, we don't even get a box that time. Oh my god. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing or looking for either. Hooray! I got an experience point. Where am I supposed to be going? There's a big open room here. There's another box. Found a lockpick. Where can we use a lockpick? Should I... Uh, use some health? Fully healed. Nice. There's no indication of where I'm supposed to be going at all. I'm just following the minimap. Okay, another one. Is that the only enemy in the game? Maybe at this point in time. <coughs> It'd be nice if there was some animations. It all feels very static. Like just a selection of images, like a slideshow more than anything. <coughs> I 
And it'd be cool if you could see the enemy's health bar as well, so you know how much. Hey, I got to level two. Let's see what difference that makes. And some scrap. Hey, there's another one. Maybe there isn't actually anywhere to go yet. Because it is only a game jam game. It might just be a first person exploration demo. But let's keep exploring a bit more. There must be something to do. <coughs> oh, I thought it was at a dead end. It looks like it's still going off into the distance there. Got some more experience points. Oh, I was just facing the other way. It just turned me around. I'm not sure what the point of having doors is, if you can just go straight through them. Oh nice, killed him in one shot. Oh my god, there's another one immediately. I suppose I better use another heal. I really have no idea what I'm trying to do. How long have we been going? Ten minutes? Let's give it another five minutes or so, see whether anything happens. He's standing on the box. Why does it always face me the other way to what I was moving as well? That's a bit annoying. And there's so many empty boxes. The lab is sealed. Oh, okay. We found a dead end. <coughs> Maybe I have to try and find a key. I don't know where that robot went that I was following earlier. Let's uh, let's have a think about some of the judging criteria while we're playing through. Um, gameplay, extremely simple. I'll definitely give it some points for attempting to recreate a first-person maze. That's pretty cool. Um, would be nice if you could see more of the map. And also... I don't know, but the way it's displayed is you never actually look at the screen itself. You just look at the map in the corner to move around because it's the only way of actually figuring out where you are because all the walls look exactly the same. Um, and got a very basic but competent um, turn-based battle system. Hey, we found the drone again. <coughs> Oh, do I have to fight it? I suppose I should heal. This might be uh, the end of me. Four points of damage. Incredible. Nice that it's got critical hits as well. Right, this is my last chance. I've run out of heals. Let's see if I can kill it. I keep missing. Only got five hit points left. Yay, we did it. Got three XP. Oh, didn't get anything for it. It's empty, again. I wish they didn't put empty treasure chests everywhere. Okay, this will probably be the end and then I'll get to the scoring. Um, what else? Technical? I'll definitely give it high points for technicality because it has managed to recreate a first person dungeon which is pretty obscure for the Game Boy 
despite it being very simple, it's technically accomplished. It'd be nice if the maze had more of a unique graphics, so you could actually tell where you were a bit easier. Graphics, very basic. Nice big sprites for the for the enemies, though. Um, originality? Depends how we're rating that. I mean, as a game concept, it's very unoriginal, but for something on the Game Boy, it's quite original, so have to give it a zero for audio. And I don't understand how that fits the theme at all, either. So, there we go. And now the next one is called Feed It Souls. Okay, here's the next game. This one is called Feed It Souls by the developer Gumpy Function. And that is very loud. Maybe it's just very loud for me. It looks fine in OBS. Okay, anyway, let's check out this game. Looks like we've got a few different options here. And I completely skipped them, so I didn't see what that actually said there. Oh well, let's just presume I picked play, start, who knows. Hopefully you can actually hear the game okay. I think so. Awaken with a big smiley face and then uh, alien style egg. Okay. And we have a man with a hand for a head. What is going on? Feed it souls. Well do. Don't want to get on its bad side. <clears throat> you. I made you. For one purpose only. You will bring me souls. For I am hungry. You shall be rewarded for your efforts. But if you fail me, I shall destroy you. Also, I wish for attention. You must bring me that every so often too. What are you, a YouTuber? Now try jumping with A. Okay. Ha ha ha, pathetic. You can't even jump yet, but you will soon, and much more. <clears throat> okay. Now get out of here and bring me those souls. Oh, okay. Weird, weird controls. Again, like a few of the other ones, there's a bit of a delay after you stop pressing the D-pad. So that might make it a little bit awkward if there's some platforming challenges to uh, to try and do. Not home. Okay, let's go. Not home. Pretty cool seeing a multi-screen scrolling platformer like this. Oh, am I dead already? Okay, I'm guessing that eyeball is a uh, checkpoint. Let's stick on the ground this time. Go faster! Oh, I can't go anywhere. Oh, was there something over that way? Yeah, there's an egg. I guess that's what I need. Continue or quit. There's no inventory system or anything. They remind me of the enemies from Kirby. If you try and eat them, they'll chase after you. Okay, looks like I can't go over there until I learn to jump. We got something else. Is that a soul? Soul retrieved. Hooray. Oh, okay. It just teleports you straight back there. You found one. A delicious soul. Now give it to me. There you go. I feel the power. <clears throat> Do you feel it? Do you feel the power of... Non-copyright Metroid jingle. I can jump. Let me jump. Walk in front of it. Press up. No, get more souls. Oh, nice. There is a map as well. Start to save. You are here. Nice. This is like a proper Metroidvania adventure then. Wow. What does that do? 
Anything? No. Nope. What about this? Select pallet? Oh, wow, cool. I guess I haven't collected enough souls yet. That's nice, though. I'm really enjoying this so far. This has to be one of the best games that I've played at the moment. I'm interested to see what other power-ups we'll get later on as well. Can I jump over him? Yes. Actually, there'll be something else down here. There it is. I'm not sure what the eggs are for. Oh, I mistimed that. Ouch. Do I get to keep that egg? Not sure. Let's have another look down here. Oh, okay, you can grab onto the wall. That looks like it's intentional, too. I didn't know whether you'd be able to or not. Oh, nice. Ah! Uh, maybe make the jump a little bit higher, because that's a little bit... Uh, scary. Gah, go! You can just about make that. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do this one. Oh. Maybe make those enemies a little bit smaller. Make it a little bit more forgiving. Oh my god. And you don't go up to full speed if you jump and then move either. There's a little bit of a slowdown in the air rather than just running straight from the ground. Anyway, we did it. Oh, I like that eyeball that's moving in the background as well. That's nice attention to detail. Hold B. What? I didn't know I could do that. I can run. It has a separate run button. I didn't even need to unlock it. I had it the whole time. Okay, there's a platform there. Ah! Go away, crazy frog. Let's try and get this first. I don't even know what the eggs are for. Are they currency? Maybe I can't get there yet. Let's try and jump a little bit closer. Yay, we did make it. Seems like there's a... Uh, ah! Seems like there's a few different options of where I can actually go now. I like the atmospheric music as well, very nice. Very... Brinstar, or Planet Zebus overworld, I guess. <clears throat> Ow! Okay, I need to figure out the uh, pattern for that. Looks like I need a double jump to get there. Is that someone hanging from the ceiling? We did it. Another egg. Again, I don't really know what they're for. No, oh, that was close. I feel like those bullets shouldn't have been there on that screen. That was maybe a carryover from the last level. Ooh, we get a cutscene or something? Nice. I don't have a way of attacking him yet though, so I hope I don't have to start a fight. It's like the SAX Metroid in Fusion. I wonder whether that's a reference. Seeing him slowly walk around from above like that. Haven't we already been here? There's a repeated room. I don't like this. That was close. There's a soul. Oh my god. How are you supposed to time that? Hmm, hopefully we don't have to watch the cutscene again. Oh good, we can go straight past. 
I like that it keeps everything that you've already picked up as well, so you don't need to worry about it again. That was a lot better. This reminds me of those weird screw enemies from the original Mega Man. Oh no, he's fast. Looks like we can go that way as well. Do I need a wall jump? Ah! Damn it, I knew I shouldn't have done that. <coughs> Looks like the soul's at the top of this area though, so I'm not sure how to go up to get to that. Oh no, I timed that very badly. Oh, that was close. A little bit of coyote time. Always good to say. So, go down here. This is where I died last time. How am I supposed to time this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, grab onto the wall. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Okay, let's try again. I can definitely see this one winning the competition, though. It's definitely the one that I've enjoyed the most so far. I mean, there's still a few left. But this is the one that's closest to being a proper game. Even if it is getting quite frustrating on this section, they definitely need to tweak some of these level designs and make it a little more forgiving, else people will end up just giving up at this point, I think. And maybe give you some sort of attack a bit earlier than this. And having these with, like, just a inch to time is way too unforgiving for something this early on in the game. So I would definitely recommend tweaking that a little bit. Like I said before, or I think I did anyway, don't base the game's difficulty around your own skill level. Base it around your skill level, like, minus five, I guess, because it's always easier for you because you've played the game so much during the development, but when you give the game to someone else who isn't intimately familiar with all the mechanics and stuff, it can actually be a lot more difficult than you think it might be. Same goes for this section here. Oh, I didn't get close enough to the wall. I'll give it one more try. I do have some more games that I need to judge tonight. But I think I've got a pretty good idea of what this game's all about at this point. That was close. Uh, okay, right. I'm going to stop there, because I'll just end up doing this all night. So, anyway, that was Feed It Souls. Let's get up the judging criteria, and without giving anything away, let's have a look through. Gameplay, I thought, was overall fantastic. There's definitely some tweaks that need to be done, though, like in terms of the movement feels a little off. Like, compared to... I don't know what what's a similar game to this. It's not really Metroid. It's more like VVVVV or something. So have a look and see how the physics work in a game like that. Like it's not it's not bad, but it definitely feels a little bit slippery and delayed. Technical overall is very good. Lots of nice animation. Originality is good too. I haven't really seen a game that is this much like a. Metroidvania in the progression sense. 
Graphics are really nice. Audio is really good. And theme, I guess, is good too because you're you're a monster that's been created by another monster. I don't really understand the point of it just yet, but I guess that gets explained a bit later on. So, really enjoyed this one overall. A few tweaks here and there, and some tweaks to the level design and the difficulty curve. This could be one of the all-time great homebrew games, if you keep it up. So, good work, Gumpy Function. And we have two games left. The next one is called Exterminator. Alright, the next game we've got here is a game called Exterminator by Glitchy TSP. Is that Glitchy Tablespoon? That would be odd. Um, okay, we are greeted with a blue outline of a house. And a delivery driver, maybe? Stage one, okay. Interesting. Oh wow, okay, that's not what I was expecting. Am I supposed to be killing bugs? Okay, is that that kind of exterminator? Okay, I have some sort of spray. <coughs> I don't really understand how this fits the theme. Like, isn't an exterminator good? If there's a house of things that need exterminating? I'm not sure how you're the monster in this situation. Maybe from the animal's eyes themselves? Why does it kind of remind me of the Michael Jackson game on the Mega Drive? Uh, okay, am I supposed to be spraying them or jumping on them? I'm not really sure. Okay. There's one in the bath. Uh, it looks like there's two more to find in this level. Uh, key and money? Did I find a key or is it saying I need a key? I think I have a key to this door here now then. Yeah. Hello? There's a naked guy in there. Game over? What? <laughs> what killed me? I don't understand what happened then. Alright, let's try again. Very strange game, not what I was expecting at all. I'd like to know the uh, developer's thought process behind making this for this jam in particular. I'm very confused. No, oh, I think the intro broke then. That shouldn't happen. Okay, I'm finding money. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I need money. <coughs> Is that where I get that spray from? Maybe I'm supposed to spray that naked guy in the other room. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Simpsons game on the original NES as well, in a weird way. I really just don't understand why this exists. Like, who... I just don't get it. I mean, it's it's competently made. There's that guy again. Let's try spraying him. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to at least try and get past the first level. <clears throat> I really don't know. There's no health bar or anything. Okay. Let's try again. We have to watch this intro cutscene again. And the stage name is uh, missing again. Do I have to pick them up after I've killed them as well? That might be something that I'm missing. Well, the number went down, so I'm doing something right. I haven't got the spray can though. Maybe I don't need it. I just have to jump on them? <clears throat> and then watch out for a naked guy who might show up at some point. There he is. Oh my god, I'm really bad at this. Okay, let's try again. Oh, 
Okay, I wish there was a way to skip this or just to restart from the uh, beginning of the level each time. Alright, we're back in. I'm going to get the spray can first thing this time. I just realised there's a timer in the middle of the screen as well. And a speaker? Does it also track how noisy you're being or something? Definitely giving me Simpsons vibes for some reason. <clears throat> right. Ah! He's still there. Oh my god. There's not enough space on the screen to see where he is to give you a chance to react in time. Alright. Let's try again. How many more tries shall I give it? I'll do three more. We're only five minutes in. I can give it a bit more of a chance first. I really don't understand the appeal of this game though. It's a very odd one. Oh, okay, you get a tick if you've done something right on the bottom right there. I presume it's unlimited sprays as well. Now we got to be really careful about this guy. There he is. I don't know how to escape from him. Can I spray him? Leave me alone. Go away. I don't know how you're supposed to get around him. Not like that. Okay, let's try again, again, again. Again. Why is the mouse so fast this time? And the spray's not working. I really don't know how to get around this guy. You can't jump over him. Unless I come up here maybe and jump on, jump over him there. <clears throat> but I need to empty this room out first. Okay, ah, uh, no, again, I don't think there's any way around it. There must be more to the game than this, but I don't know whether I'm going to be able to see any. Again, developers, check your difficulty before you finish submitting games, because too many people aren't going to give the game a fair chance. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot to get the spray. Never mind. Ah, uh, very. Oh, you can't turn round in time either because it's so slippery. All right, one more. Well, I'll give it. A few more minutes, anyway. It's only been eight minutes. I just haven't made any progress whatsoever. But let's keep trying. Oh, oh you can't turn around on the stairs, either. I'm going to go in here and then just quickly leave straight away. This just seems impossible. There he is. Jump over him. No, you can't even jump over him. Alright. I'm going to give up there. That was ten minutes. And I really don't think I'm going to make any progress with this game. A very, very strange one. 
I don't understand how it fits the competition at all, so I really can't rate it that highly on the theme. The gameplay, I was just confused about more than anything. Technically, it's quite good. It's quite original, and it has nice graphics. And the audio was okay. So, I guess we'll leave it there for that one. Very interesting game. If the developer's watching, let me know why you decided to make this. And the final game is called Enceladus. And it's getting a bit late now, so I'll probably leave that one until next time. So, see you in a minute, which is a day for me. And here we are with the final game of the Game Jam. This is number 15, Enceladus by Mr. Papschmer. Papschmer? I think. I have no idea how to pronounce that, so I apologise. Anyway, they found a new life form on one of the Saturn moons. Uh, trapped in the, inter in the eternal ice of the moon called Enceladus. They built a research station on the ice moon. I'm loving these graphics. By the way, this looks really impressive. Very good job with the graphics. <clears throat> Studied the way of life, held it captured, caused it pain. Until... Ooh, nice graphics in the game as well. Is this me breaking out? Huh. Nice. This is me. I am a little space worm. I'm sure I recognise this music from somewhere else. Okay, I need to come back here when I can learn to jump, I suppose. Oh. I guess not. I guess I'm trapped on this side, then. <clears throat> can I go on there? Oh. Weird. I can sort of float across there. I'm not really sure what was happening then. Oh, maybe it's like going across a ladder. Okay. Um, where am I trying to go? Exit? Oh, I can't get up there. There's a guy down there looking a bit scared. Is he scared because of me? Okay. I guess we have to try and get through that door somehow then. And I can't move. Oh. That's weird. The. Oh, weird. Something broke for a second then. I couldn't move. I'm guessing at some point I get to come back and kill all these guys that are just standing around. Ooh, nice. We have evolved. Slightly. Now I look like a parrot. Um, didn't seem to make any difference. Oh, I can press B on here now and open the gate. I don't think I've heard this track before. This might be a new one. Okay, that is locked. I wonder what happens if I go up there and touch a man then. Whoa. Let's see what happens. Do I kill him? Oh, yes, I do kill him. Oh, my God. Okay. Didn't expect that much gore, but that's cool. I'm guessing the point of the game is to kill all of the scientists, maybe? There's no sort of UI whatsoever. Let's try pressing start or select. Nope, there is nothing at all. Hopefully that's something that can get added in a bit later on. Not sure what that does either. Just 
pressing B and it made a noise, but nothing seemed to happen. And I don't want to find out what happens when I touch them. Oh, okay. They just opened the door to get back. No, I still can't get over there, though. Okay. Let's try going all the way back round. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... There must be more power-ups somewhere. I think I've already been down there. That's where I got the first one. Oh, that's how I opened the door. I don't really know what I got. Uh, okay, that's a dead end as well. I must be missing something. This is new. Okay, we found somewhere new. I can't get up there yet. Seems to be a lot of not much going on in these corridors. Another block door. There's a power up down there in that big X tube thing. Right, see this guy? How dare he be standing there? Now we have to dodge some... I don't even know what they are. Electric flowers? Oh, I'm scared. We did something, but it didn't open that door. There's another one. Maybe that opened the door? It'd be nice if it actually showed you what those buttons did. Like, pan the camera over to what it's affecting, and then go back again. Maybe. Only just throwing suggestions out there. So, has that opened up another door somewhere else? That's where I just came from, wasn't it? Let's just see what's on the other side here. Yeah, I don't want to go back down there again. I can't jump. Not yet, anyway. I don't need to. Maybe that is my ability to jump. Let's see. Oh! I've become uh Oh, it's a very awkward jump. I can tell this is built on the same engine as a, a lot of the other games in this competition. It feels almost identical to the... The one we just played, Feed It Souls, was it? It feels very similar to that. Eat another man. I love how the character changes its um, its sprite as you're getting these new power-ups. That's a really interesting way of showing it. <coughs> now it's becoming a bit more of a precision platformer, in a way. So with quite awkward, floaty jumping physics, but I seem to be doing okay. I'm still presuming the point is to go around and kill everyone. Oh, that's what they do. Mega Man style. Not sure what that noise is. Is that me walking? Duh, chunk, 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 chunk. Where are we going now? Whoa! Okay, I wasn't expecting that change in graphics. That's cool. Can I go down there? Nope. That is not a hole. Okay, that is just lava. Doesn't seem like there's any sort of life or any sort of repercussions of getting hit or anything either. Um, Is it even possible to make that jump? 
Oh, it is just about. Okay, that platform there definitely needs lifting up because some people might not even realise you can get past that. Interesting level design though. I like how it actually feels like a cave system. It is very strange that it just resets you directly where you just got hit. Like there's no there's no reason to be careful about anything. You can just mindlessly push on and not care about falling down or anything. The, maybe the checkpoint system is a bit too forgiving. Or maybe that go, just goes to show that the engine and the jumping mechanics need a lot of tweaking before it actually feels good enough to trust the player to be able to navigate without getting hit all the time. Hey, there's somewhere we couldn't go before. I like that he turns into a weird sun creature when you climb in as well. There's another one down. It'd be great if there was a map to show you people that you found and whether you've killed them or not. Oops. Again, no repercussions for dying, no health or anything. It'd be great if there was an actual health bar and some pickups to find in the level that would make it more interesting to, to go around as well if you had things to collect. It feels very empty at the minute. But definitely one of the uh, better games from the jam so far. Well, I say so far, this is the last one I'm judging, so... Definitely going to be quite high on my list. And I hope the developer... Again, I hope the developer carries on uh, with the development and improves on some of these aspects that I've pointed out so far. Ah, that's where we were before. Okay, let's go up here then. Oh, what was the point of that? It just dropped me back off there anyway. No, I have no idea where it wants me to go. Ah, there's another guy. Still more? I thought there might be everyone. In this demo. Oh yeah, there's a guy up there too. Now we can climb on that ladder. Sorry, you thought you were safe up there. No one's safe. <coughs> Let's go do some more exploring for places that we can jump over then. Is there any point in going down here? We're going back to the start of the game, by the looks of it. We never went down here. Well, you can't actually go down there. Okay. And we can't get back over there either. Right, let's go back inside, I guess. There must be more to do. I don't understand this one still, like, uh, oh, you have to press up first and then you can go across. Uh, up there. That's somewhere I couldn't get to before. Oh no. Oh, that just sets you back down again. Here we go, this is new. You killed all the scientists, you are a brutal monster. Is that it? Did I escape? Thank you for playing. Thank you for making this game. This was definitely one of the best ones. And, uh, yeah, while I'm not saying the exact scores, I'll say this one's definitely rating 
very highly. And I can't decide whether this one was better or Feed It Souls, but they were definitely my favourite two. And I have clicked Submit! That is it. Game Boy Competition 2023 is officially complete. So I can't wait to see what other people chose as their winners. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me as I played through and rated these games. Hopefully you enjoyed the feedback to all the developers that were watching. Hopefully that was useful. And I can't wait to do it all over again next time. So thank you so much. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.